Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. This is our Greyhawk Patreon game. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see that we already have two draws from the deck of many things. I will get to that here in just a moment. Thank you so much, Emma Panada, for those wonderful boons or banes. We will find out shortly. Uh, real quick, shout out to our Patreons. Without your support, all of the one shots and marathons that we do here at this channel would not be possible. All the people that you see here on the screen are Patreons. Thank you so much for all of your help. Because of you, I get to do cool shit. If you want to see what you can get for being a Patreon, you can check out that link there in the chat. We also have a YouTube. You can find all of our previous episodes on the YouTube, including Session Zero. So today we are starting Session One, and uh, it's going to be the start of our adventure for reals. The training wheels are off. Plot armor gone. You know, now, if you, you know, encountered some real tough stuff, I don't know, I can't guarantee anything, I'm sorry. Wait, but I went down in one hit last time. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Where was my plot armor? Hey, hey, <laughs> frog <you're> armor. Back. <laughs> <laughs> frog armor, that's right, that's yeah. right. Frog of war. Frog oh, of no. War. Oh my god. Amazing. Uh, there are a couple of ways that you, our dear viewers, can interact with this game. You can redeem channel points to grant a blessing, which is a pocket reroll or advantage die, to the player of your choice, including myself. Or you can add an element of fate. Every $10 guarantees a draw from the deck of many things to the player of your choice. And we're just going to go ahead and start this off right now. Matt. Matty. Rick yeah, so we have two Matthews. Um, Matt, Matthew and Matt. Um, Ricaria, mm -hmm. please tell me when to stop. Mm. Stop. Okay. And again. Okay, stop. Okay. Haha. -ha. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> uh, for more information about that, you can check out that information there in chat. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So please tell me a little bit about who you are who you're playing, and um, we'll worry about introductions in-game. So just tell me about your character. Go ahead and start us off, V. Hey, I'm Vertigo Cross. I mostly just goof around with games and my best friend Stella. Uh, for this campaign, I'm playing as Lavelli, a very cool and kind ex-pirate monk uh, who's also a bird. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Zombie Fighter 89. Wow, I'm second. What, what's going on here? Hello, I am Jacob. I am Zombie. I am Z. I am whatever you like to call me. I am the Lore Keeper Clip Master. I probably do too many clips, but that's up to your own discretion. I am playing Chester Cuttingham, uh, who is a bit of a wild magic uh, circus hand. He's been part of the circus for, for the longest of times. And uh, yeah, that's. That's him. Uh, as far as me goes, um, I'm mostly active on Twitter at ZombieFighter89. I'm also very, very active in Stella's Discord and uh, Grobo's and a few others. And as well as the person um, that we'll probably get to at some point, Mr. Matthew over there, me and him, we do a show every single Monday, at, well, most Mondays, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, the nice Nirvana. We talk about nerdy news and all kinds of fun stuff. And yeah, it's a good time. Come check us out. Oh yeah, nerd shows. Yeah, nerd shows. Woo! we like nerd shit. Thank you so much. Next, we have B Street Holmes. Hi guys, uh, I'm B Street Holmes. Basically, anywhere you're gonna find me on the internet. Um, I also am Matthew, uh, and uh, I, as uh, Zombie Fighter said, I do a show on Mondays. Although he will be very early if he shows up at eight, because we our show goes on at ten. But oh shit! Sorry, <laughs> you've only been doing this with us for like five years. It's fine. Uh, only five. Hey, you know what? I could have said Thursday. That's true. We used to do Thursdays. Um, I feel like but... that's some MVP shit. Just getting people to show up two hours early. Like they'll <laughs> definitely be there, right? Look, it's been five years. He's gone through a couple of different like time changes. You know, he just forgot. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 moving fair. forward. Listen, um, my my mind is here. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to be playing uh, Kalik Ovari, an elf rogue who is out to claim fame and fortune and glory of his own after hearing the tales of his parents' adventuring lives. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Geek Dice. 
Hey folks, I'm Geek Dice. You can find me here on Wednesdays, if not for this game, on opposing Wednesdays for another Greyhawk game. We play Secrets of Salt Marsh. Also, you can find me Sundays over in Greyhawk Tales, also a Greyhawk game. So again, today, session one, I'm playing Riley, a human sorcerer who has been commissioned by the Royal Court of Ferndy to advance the cause of chess mastery throughout the realm. So seeking out aspiring players, seeking out those with talent, skill, and potential. You too may be a chess master. You just don't know it yet. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Matihi. Hi, I'm Matihi. You can find me here uh, every other Wednesday, of course, playing Rakaria, the druid tiefling, who doesn't have a last name. Well, they do, but I'll reveal it if they get too low in hit points. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Matty Matihi, and very, very rarely streaming on my own channel at Matihi. Um, I am also over on Emma Panada's channel, playing a few games like Avatar on Fridays, and I also run on Tuesdays our Curse of Strahd game. Um, so if you want a good uh, dummy strad, then you can come over and hang out. Um, yeah, and I'm very excited. Oh, and this is Sir Lancelot, the best snack and best friend in the world. It goes along with Rakaria everywhere they go. Excellent. Thank you so much. And all of the beautiful character art that you see on the screen is by Be Cocky. We should definitely check them out if you can. Uh, you can find them over on Instagram and Twitter at that handle. All right. To start us off, we fade the screen to black. The traveling extravaganza known as the Witchlight Carnival visits your world once every eight years. You have a dim memory of sneaking into the carnival as a child without paying for a ticket. That memory has grown foggy over time though it still conjures a weird admixture of emotions, wonder and awe miss with loss and regret. During this childhood visit, your character lost something. You tried to find it, but the carnival owners, a pair of elves named Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, were decidedly unhelpful. Silly little screeching cricket, said Witch, you, for you forgot to buy a ticket. The carnival goes round and round, said Light, the multiverse is our playground. Nothing's free and nothing's lost. Every visit has its cost. As time passed, your heart became less heavy and you gave less and less thought to those childhood events. Now, for reasons you can't explain, the longing to retrieve that which you have lost has resurfaced, as though an old spell has faded away, allowing you to feel the loss as sharply as if it happened yesterday. The Witchlight Carnival has returned, and you find yourself standing near a ticket booth by the entrance at twilight, just as the carnival is about to open. There you will meet others who look just as troubled as you. You sense that perhaps fate has brought you together in this moment. So in session zero, we did have a little bit of an introduction as a party. To sum it up in a real quick re recap, we had the carnival making its way here into Greyhawk. We are currently in the Vesvi forest, somewhere a stone's throw away from Chendal. And I will direct you to some art here. All right. Uh, so I believe we I showed this to everybody last time, but you see streaking across the sky are these caravans led by winged creatures, some of which are horse-like, some of which are fox-like, brilliant array of color. And from them, there was a small black speck that went soaring down the sky. And we more or less converged on that point. And there we met Chester. A witchlight hand for the carnival, making her way through the forest, defeating a suspiciously large frog. We made our way to the forefront of the carnival itself. You are currently standing outside of this array of color and light. Overhead, you see giant dragonflies streaming large banners of brilliant oscillating color. 
And before you is a ticketing booth. A silver statue of a dancing fairy is mounted on the roof of this ticket booth and surrounded by fluttering butterflies. The booth is decorated with an animated depiction of the night sky with shooting stars arcing across it. As the open sign flaps down and the shutters burst open upon Chester's inspection, you see an elderly goblin perching behind the counter, peering at you quizzically through a spyglass. He lowers his spyglass and calls out to you, Greetings, fair, fair goers. Yeah, ho hello. Hello. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened, but um, I, I, th I think I fell off of the, off the cart, but I'm here now. I don't want anyone to think I left. Go ahead and roll me a history check. Let's see if you recognize this person. So even though you've been working here with the Witchlight Carnival for some time, there are very many oh, people and things. Yeah. Okay, with a 10, uh, I'm gonna say that you know that it's a pretty big deal that people need to buy tickets. So this is definitely something that you should hang out at until you manage to get one for each one of the people with you. <laughs> Um, well, we'll, we'll, <clears throat> I'll, I'll get us a, I'll get, I'll make sure that everyone gets tickets. I'll get a ticket. You see this elderly goblin, as they're lowering down the, the spyglass, they reach out for an ear horn. They take this sort of metallic device and they just huck it right into their ear. They adjust it so that it goes down towards you. What did you say? I said, even though I'm, I'm so, I'm kind of here with the show. I'll, I'll buy a ticket if that's what you desire. Oh, you're here to get a ticket. Come on, come all, you step forward. Let me get a good. And they pop, pull it out, and lift up the giant telescope and take the spyglass and look at each and every one of you, so I can get a closer look. Is it giant in like a normal sense, or is it giant compared to him? It is a normal spyglass. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm all for buying a ticket. Um, how much? Oh, yes. I have a good look at you. They slap the spyglass over to a sign that is right next to them. And the sign reads, Eight silver for an adult ticket and three silver for a child's ticket. Arcaria starts to like search their pockets, like in their coin purse, and like, um, um, just give me a sec. One, two, and starts like counting out coins. No, 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 no. That's huh? that's good. No. Um, I, I got this, friends. How much for all of us? Oh. Now bring out my coin purse. I'll pay for everybody. Four gold for all of us. Okay. Yeah, math. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that's how numbers work. Oh no. Count out count out the need of It's ten to one, right? For all the currency. Yep. All right. Uh so as you put down four gold, all of a sudden this goblin reaches forward and grabs your wrist. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, he grabs my wrist and this, the sleeve on my arm or, or my gloved hand, and I seem extremely startled. Oh, oh, don't, don't touch. No, no, don't touch. Oh, my apologies. And they withdraw looking very flustered. Uh, here, here's the coin. Clink, clink. Put it on the, on the counter there in front of them. Oh, I... I have a, you have a curious way about you. I am supposed to keep an eye out for a certain group of people. Perhaps you may know them. Do you know anyone by the name of Kalik? Chester? Riley? Lavelli? Ricaria? Um, uh, that's look. us. That's us, for sure. Ah. Was I not supposed to say that? 
the moment where half the group debates on lying to their face <laughs> and Makari just immediately says it's it. Ah. So does he appear threatening? <laughs> no, he looks delighted. Uh, he puts the two devices down and you see him disappear behind the counter and you hear a great manner of clinking and clonking as things are being distributed about. All of a sudden there's a thunk. A thunk as he brings out a small ornate wooden box. It has a silver clasp on it and is monogrammed NM. He turns it so it faces towards you. He pulls it open. You see a small velvet cushion on the inside and on top of it there are five tickets. I can show you what the ticket looks like. Ooh. We were oh, that was Ooh. you. I was, I was <laughs> like, why is the goblin telling us it can show us what the ticket looks like? Let me show you. <laughs> so oh, you uh, see that it is embroidered in golden paint, and on the back side, in a very fine script, are each of your names. Oh, uh, very nice. Uh, so where we expected then? Oh. Ow. Interesting. Huh. By an anonymous benefactor, was what I was told. Hmm. Curious, up, given we only just met. I scoop up the tickets, and I hand them out by name. And Chester, and Calic, and Lavelli, and Ricaria. Please. Do you leave your four gold on the counter? Wherever he wanted it, yeah. <laughs> oh, they already paid for... Um, oh. Huh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. You sure? It's got your name on it, doesn't it? Oh, well, unless you were lying. The spyglass comes up. Were you lying? Oh, no, 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 no. 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 We're, we're, we're who you say we are. All right. Isn't he with you? Lavelli points at Chester. Shouldn't you know who Chester is? <laughs> the spyglass just wheels over to Chester and just zooms in. Listen, we have so many witch, uh, light, witch light hands throughout the carnival. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, it, it, it's, it's true. I mean, there's a lot of us that sort of come through. You know, <clears throat> if it was to the point where I could recognize you, that's probably a bad thing. That probably means you were up to no good. Oh, well, then uh, you wouldn't know me at all. Wouldn't take us familiar with your act, perhaps. Not sure your chester but your uh what did you call oh, yourself the purple dragon of course yes oh i've heard of you well i don't know what you're doing standing out here but I, you know the rules yeah. yeah i know the rules and all of a sudden they they clatter down and you hear another rummaging of chests and things going flying paper rustling and then they reappear and slap down boom on the counter, there are five sets of fake fairy wings. Oh, nice. Chester, oh. you yeah. know that every paying customer has to wear these. And if at any point they take them off or they get destroyed, you will get thrown out of the carnival. Yes, this is sort of a, <clears throat> you know some places have wristbands and things, we have wings. So this is sort of the, Patrons. Every patron has to have one of these. Uh, do, are, are, are all the sets of wings card. identical? Uh, we will say that the goblin has definitely sized you all up so that they will be able to fit each person. You can describe what yours looks like. It can be in all sorts of uh, manner of nearly destroyed, perfectly flawless, whatever you like. So, Ricaria, what does your set of wings, as they get thrust towards you, look like? I think um, as they take them, the base of the wings themselves, like kind of the skeleton of the wings are, it's all made out of vines that are kind of twisting and curling in on each other and forming these like big, beautiful um, kind of plant-like wings. And to fill in uh, kind of uh, between each of these vines um, are these like very thin leaves that seem to be 
not quite stitched together, but like almost like paper mache together. And the light can like a little bit of it filters in between some of the of these leaves and there's like little holes inside them as well. And she puts them on and says, these look really cute. <laughs> and she's kind of spinning around looking at them while everyone else puts theirs on. You hear delighted cackle coming from the goblin. Riley, what does yours look like? So mine look like a large set of dragonfly wings. They're um, semi-transparent, kind of chromatic in color. This, as they, as the wind cat catches them and they they kind of move a little bit, there's a shimmer of this this uh, this gradient of color between green, blue, and purple that kind of ripples across it in in the wind as they sit there. Oh, I love it. How about Kalik? Uh, the wings that Kalik grabs, uh, the sort of framing, like structuring of the, that gives it shape, uh, is done in like gold. And then the, the inner, um, lighter airier parts are kind of an opal appearance. Very nice. Lavelli, what do your wings look like? So Lavelli's got sort of like an insectoid carapace that is as white as bone, interlaced with spider webs and a gossamer uh, film. A little on the spooky side, but it is serviceable enough. Make sure you don't get into a sticky situation. <laughs> And Chester. Wow, my joke was so bad that it made me laugh. Like, now, done. Goodbye. Blink, blink, blink. Why? <laughs> it's fine. Uh, how about you, Chester? What do your wings look like? I think Chester's wings would sort of, um, they would have like the, the kind of like a, a bit of a bigger sort of presence on them, a little bit bigger of wings, but they'll probably look about the same color as the one caravan that's sort of like that, like green, that kind of like. I don't know if it's bright green, lime green. I don't know what the exact color of it, but that a uh, one caravan that's got that green color to it, mm -hmm. and then maybe some like purple sparkle in in between all of it. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So each one of you like zoop zip, zip, You put on your wings, and the goblin gestures very gently to the various tickets that are in your hands and says, "Each ticket has eight punches. You will be able to." Go about the fair as you please. If you lose your ticket, you must purchase another one. Oh, um, can, can we buy extra tickets now? Maybe I want more punches. Oh, you can absolutely do that. I like the way you think. You are a one of forethought. Yeah, so th the gold is sitting there on the counter still. Please. Ha. For gold forethought. <laughs> and you hear the, the scraping of the coins as they get pulled forward and... You get distributed bloop, 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 five extra tickets. Nice. So much fun. <clears throat> I share them with my friends. Extra ticket for everybody. Oh, Excellent. an extra ticket. Oh. Mm. And you, you can Much see, appreciated. You can see Chester sort of pondering over it, thinking, if I ever do get to go back, who do I give this to? And sort of just kind of puts it in his pocket. As you're kind of uh, looking at it, um, the goblin looks at you thoughtfully, Chester, and says, well, you know, since you are a paying customer, you're technically off the clock. You could perhaps enjoy some of the festivities. It seems like oh. you've got good company. I do. I, I'm not used to being off the clock. Um. Yeah. I, I, I guess I can give. I guess I can give this place a better look around than normal. Yes, you better not go spoiling secrets. Oh no, no! Our secrets are safe. I promise. All right, I'll be keeping my spyglass coming up. Bloop, eye on you. That was a great joke, Stella. Almost as good as the last one. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, been working, waiting two weeks for that one. It was so funny. I had to like step away for a moment. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, very well. Make sure you stay hydrated and consume everything you can. Have fun. Oh. Yes, carnival food. Always really good. As we're as we're like headed now into the carnival before anything grabs other people's attention, uh 
Kaelic is going to kind of like look around to, to each of the other people. Uh, my father's had more than his fair share of dealings with the fairies. They know our names. Uh, he kind of waves his, his ticket with his name on it. And they've invited us to eat their food. This is never a good combination. Oh no, my dad told me about this and told me not to do that. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Uh, can I get a dexterity saving throw from Kalik? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, okay. That'll teach you to be suspicious. That's a mm. 14. All right. That's totally fine. So there's like a, eh, as some, and you hear like a really like pitiful throwing sound thunk of something landing near your boot. It was meant to go for the back of your head. It like falls way short of that. And you turn around, Kalik, to see a small pamphlet, and it is a map. Hmm. Don't worry, you, you hear the voice just from the ticket booth. It's all perfectly safe. As long as you keep your tickets, you'll be fine. <sighs> Great hospitality. That's three strikes. We're done. And he picks up the pamphlet and like opens it to look at the map so we can see what what we're dealing with. Absolutely. <laughs> As you all conveniently gather around, you see a map. Ooh. Oh my god. It's like Candyland. This I'm is amazing. It. You, my dear. Look at all this stuff we can do, oh my gosh. Adventurers, you are right here by the ticket booth. Lavelli is just like standing off to the side a bit, fidgeting with the fairy wings, trying to adjust them so they're not also in the way of her wings and just failing in general. I think Rick will go over to Lavelli and say, do you want some um, help with that? She, uh, she glances over at Rick and nods a bit. I don't think they made these for the uh, <sighs> vertically uh, inclined. Oh, um, well, let's see if I can help adjust. And Rukaria will just try and adjust the, the straps and everything to help out Lavelli. Okay, yeah. So as the group of you are kind of waiting there, hovering there, Behind you, because I totally didn't forget that we have an NPC companion already. <laughs> <laughs> you see this halfling dressed very, very um, gaudily. Just these really garish sort of colors and patterns. Sir Martyr Resby, who you had saved from a suspiciously large frog is currently behind you also doing the various ticket things so we can just assume that he is nearby if we forget him in future things so he's just going to we. Um, we yeah this was our fault <laughs> all right well <clears throat> ricaria ah uh, uh, in the turn around yeah yeah didn't you say that you'd lost your sense of direction the last time you were here I I think I remember that. Yeah, it was kind of gone after I'd left here. He, he uh, Caleb holds up the map so that, especially Ricardo can see it, but the, the others as well. Lost property. Lost. <gasps> oh my goodness, you're a genius! And uh, do you mind if uh, Ricardo touches Caleb? Uh, sure. Yeah, they'll like, they'll like slap him on the shoulders and then like pat his cheeks twice. You're so smart! Very proud of himself. Just beaming. Just, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> She's not an going enabler. Wrong at all. I am. <laughs> oh my god. It's not even that far away. Uh, we could at least no. go and see. No, it, it, it's not that far away. It's right over there. As the group of there. you begin to make your way into the carnival, you immediately walk right up into the main thoroughfare, and in front of you is a 12-foot tall walking tree, garland in golden ribbons marching down through the thoroughfare. 
emerald clouds hot? swirl above the tree and rain down engulfing spinning sycamore seeds. Those are like the helicopter seeds, if you know that. Um, oh. Fair goers all around you are jumping up, trying to catch the seeds before they hit the ground. As some of them begin to gently fall, you see that there's a squirrel scampering through the boughs of this tree, handing dandelions to select passerbys. Behold tree. Behold the tree. <gasps> Behold tree. Oh, oh my that's a God. terrible. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention <laughs> this this uh, particular adventure book has a lot of art in it. So, oh my yeah, God. and everything's going to have fairy wings. Be ready. Yeah, it's so cute. I was gonna say with the, with the fairy wings, would I guess Chester would was he wearing the cherry, uh the wing? Would Chester know that they are? Is that part of their thing, or are they also just visiting? So you know that not only do paying customers wear the wings, also witch light hands. So employees will also oh, wear. So I'm wear used rings. to wearing the wings then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll just, I guess I'll just assume that these have always been my wings, <laughs> the ones that I'm wearing now. It's up to you. They can be a new set that are a yeah, little. This is your guest yeah. wings. Oh yeah, my guest wings. Sure. Okay. Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yes, my tree friend over there. You're friends with him. Well, I know, I know. Uh, I, I, I suppose everyone I call here friends have been here for so long, but uh, he, he's definitely one of those uh, uh, ones that I always enjoy having around. I yeah, like I think this them. particular one you do know. As you kind of come up to them, uh, Northwind turns towards you and says, Hello, everyone. Welcome to the carnival. If you catch a seed, and they kind of do a shimmy, and you see these seeds beginning to float down, everyone who wants to try to catch one, roll me a dexterity check. Oh, I, oh no. <laughs> you have to catch it before it touches oh, the ground. Oh no. I'm not good at this. I didn't have advantage. That was no bueno. <laughs> that is a what? six from Lavelli, a ten Ooh. from Calic, eleven Riley's from Chester. trying a lot. <laughs> wow, that's an eight. Riley rolled three times, but unfortunately only. Okay, so wow, so only one person catches it. Chester, ha! Huh. You managed to so close. Grab the grab it for everyone else. Like you, like you're like about to grab it, but it does like a spin just a little too hard, and you miss it, and it. Hits the ground unceremoniously. As you catch this, one die eight. Damage. Damage. Oh god. Damage. <laughs> Damage. <laughs> no. Uh, as it as it hits your hand, just poof, it turns into a single gold piece. Oh, I remember this trick now. Be sure not to spend it all in one place. <laughs> As they laugh, the leaves shimmy a little bit. I shall not. Thank you again, my friend. Um, I would like to look up at the squirrel and say, Hey, um, I know we just met, but do you mind getting me one of those things that are falling? I'm really bad at catching. The squirrel comes like, over the shoulders of the the young treant and comes down to get close to you and says in common what do you mean that's cheating you have to catch it all on your own oh oh okay uh i just thought okay that, that's fine that's fine i just thought i'd ask well you know what, what? About the dandelions you know what oh, yeah you were kind enough to ask so yeah i you know what I'm I'm feeling generous. I'm feeling generous. You see them reach out to you and with a very tiny squirrel hand offer a dandelion seed to you. Uh -huh. <gasps> they'll take the dandelion seed and as they do they'll use druid craft on it to make it bloom. Okay. And one by one begins to offer it to each one of the players. Oh, th thank you. <clears throat> Stand there holding it. It's like looking around. Um. <laughs> Out to Lavelli. Uh, Lavelli, being unable to distrust people, takes it. Chester, you get one. 
Ah, another! Oh, nice. And Kalik, you get one. Very well. Now, <clears throat> the way that you got to use this, mm -hmm. you've got to make a wish while you blow it. You only get one, so make a count. So, players, I would like you to each private message me your wish that you make as you blow this dandelion. You can message me privately on Discord or in Zoom, but if you do it in Zoom, make sure you change the drop down and keep it secret. I, see I wish familiar. everyone exploded. No, I need it now. <laughs> did no. um no V. <laughs> did the druid craft work on it to make it like <laughs> Seed. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the seed <laughs> She's I, like, I can't blow mine anymore. Yeah, I yours, get a full one. <laughs> yours like blossoms into a full uh a full head of a flower and you have this like oh. buttery yellow flower in your hand. And the squirrel says, That's a nice trick. That's a nice trick, yeah. But you know what? That means you don't get a wish. Oh, that's okay. Do you want this? And I'll extend the flower back to the squirrel. You know what? No one's ever I'll forgive me a gift before. I'm always the one giving out the gifts and I don't get the gifts. You know, here, fine. You get a Dan Lion seed. Oh! Thanks for the flower. <laughs> she blooms yeah. it again. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> you just see, like, the, the squirrel is, like, kind of, like, a little puffed up. Or the cheeks are a little rounder. And if it could blush, it would blush. It's like Ooh. I've got other I've got other you know customers to take care of. I'll I'll see you later. Okay, goodbye. And they like disappear into the boughs of this treant, not actually reemerging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to go decorate. It's got to go find a vase yeah. and a new place to put its flower. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Made a friend. All right. I should have got their name. Oh, one, two, four. Okay. Um, the oh, no. the treant kind of bows down to you and says, "That was red." Uh, red. Yes. If you want to see more of us, you can find us over there. And you see the young treant gesture over to the northeast. We operate the dragonfly rides. Those are some really fun rides if you if if you like to be in the air and such. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. I've never been in the air before. I think we'll definitely uh Northwind we'll we'll definitely uh end up showing up there at some point. That would make my day. I do like seeing your face, Chester. Oh, I, I enjoy being around you too. Very good. Make sure you don't forget that there's a cake eating contest. Oh, then. Was it, well, we were doing the cake eating contest this time? Yes. We didn't oh. have them last time, but. Right. I always get it mixed going up. going to be a big hit this time. Oh, cake eating contests are always the big hit. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Don't know if it, I don't know what I would do without you, Northland. I'm glad we are friends. Goodbye. Plus one friend. What did you say? They're like trying to leave, and then they turn around towards you and lean to you, Lavelli. I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, that was out of character. I said plus one friend out of character. Oh, it must have been the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and you see. Northwind, the, the young treant, turn away and begin to address other fair goers that are sort of like piling in after you. So all around you, there are people of all kinds. You see that there are there are elven people walking by on stilt legs. You can see that the dragonflies are wishing overhead. In the distance, you see giant pearlescent bubbles just kind of wibbly wobbling through the air and there's people inside of them. There's all manner of things going on. It's always... <clears throat> I always find it so cool that we can do that. It's a person can be inside a bubble that just the wrong movement will pop and they can fall, but they can just fly in the air like... This something's really overwhelming. It does. There's a lot of... A lot of the day-to-day -day stuff is a bit, you know... 
mundane to me, but stuff like that is just still so fascinating. How often do they fall? More often than I'd like to admit. Chester, you would know that when people fall from the bubble, that they do experience like slow fall. So mm -hmm. it's perfectly yeah. safe. It's it's safe, but it's it's when you're when you're the one experiencing the falling, kind of like how I remember. Um, there's a little bit of panic that goes through your head at first, but we go to make sure to ensure that uh, everyone has a safe life. So, Chester, you, mm -hmm. how long have you worked here? It feels like 10 years, 12, something of that nature. Um, although time moves fast with us. So what might be 10 years or 12 for me could be different for you. But for me, it's been at least 10 or 12, yeah. So as the group of you are kind of like just ambling forward a little bit, you find that there are a number of small stalls in front of you. I'm just going to switch up the music a little because it's going to... You see in front of you are a number of small wooden shacks. They seem to have a medley of different activities going on. Um, they, each one is run by a witch-like hand. You see a variety of people. Some of them are entertaining guests with a smile. Others seem quite disenchanted and bored of what they're doing. I think the one that catches the group's attention most immediately is that there is a stall that seems to be selling snacks and drinks. The customer in front of you holds out their ticket and the attendant punches it and seems to be served a plate that is a large flower petal and they walk away with a blue frosted cupcake. Oh, those are always really yummy. Lavelli will walk up to the stall and hold out her ticket. We were told to eat everything, right? Uh, don't yeah. eat anything. Please, Lavelli. <laughs> Oh, we like paid for it? Well, Riley paid for it. So isn't it okay? Right? We gave them something? They're giving us something. Like that's that's the exchange. That's true. Right? I suppose it is an agreed trade. Exactly. We can eat. I'd As still you... be very careful. Okay. Aww. As you are having this conversation in front of you, the attendant is this minotaur kind of like hunched over inside this small stall and they have these very tiny fairy wings. They say... I don't appreciate that. I made everything by hand, and I assure you it's the greatest, finest quality, and you'll enjoy your beverage or snack. It is of yeah. my greatest pride to present to you, and they gesture over to a number of shelves behind them. You see a blue frosted cupcake, a candied apple on a stick, a giant cookie that seems to be dusted with some kind of glitter. You see... Ooh a bottle of maybe wine. You see that there is a flower that is bell-shaped and seems to be filled with liquid. You see that there are also a number of different tarts and there are some mushrooms that seem to be glazed in sugar and there's a giant lollipop. Oh. Uh, Lavelli will hold out her ticket and point at the thing that looks like wine. Okay. Uh, they say... Very good. They take out a very tiny ticket puncher and just very nimbly. Bloop. All right, please keep track of how many times your tickets get punched. You have now one punch, Lavelli. Punch. And uh, they turn around, they grab the wine, they book, uncork it with their mouth, pick up something that looks like a snail shell that's the size of a fist, and they fill it up with liquid. And hold it out to you. Please enjoy the evening berry wine. My belly takes it. Okay. Thank you. My well, pleasure. Well, Nisa in chat uh, emphasizes the importance of the giant lollipop. So I think we must do the giant lollipop. I One of us that. has to. I mean, it has to be Ricaria, right? Well, um, Ricaria <laughs> looks down um, at Sir Lancelot and says, "What do you What do you think, Sir Lancelot?" 
Sir Lancelot <laughs> looks at the shelves. Hmm. Which one? And then they're like pointing at different ones. And what vibes do I get off Sir Lancelot? Is Sir Lancelot just a snake? Sir Lancelot <laughs> is just a snake, but um, I do have a, uh, because I'm a level two druid of the shepherd, the circle of the shepherd, I have an ability that, uh, 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 speech of the wood, which I can, beasts can understand my speech and I gain the ability to decipher their noises and motions. Gotcha. Okay. So Sir Lancelot just flicks their tongue and kind of scans their eyes over the various shelves and they seem very curious about the saucer-sized cookie with glitter on it. Okay, we're gonna get the cookie, then we can share it. Can I get the cookie? Ticket, please. Okay. And they hand their ticket over. Punch. Thank you. And you get handed a large flower petal <gasps> with a cookie on it. Oh my goodness. Thank you. No, like, scurry over. They'll wait for everybody else, though. Um, good sir, kind sir. Yes. Uh, lollipop, please. All right, ticket. <laughs> Punch. Lollipop, and please. They reach over and grab this lollipop, which is as big as your head, and they extend it out to you. It is this sort of amber color, and you see that there seems to be some kind of honey substance that's slowly dripping from it. It's very sticky. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Next. Go ahead, Kalik. Okay, Kalik is probably, like, after Karya got hers, has, like, gone gone off next to her, and he's, like, muttering under his breath as he goes, Minotaur made it. Minotaur's not part of the Fae, so maybe it's okay. And he's just, like, trying to reason through, Damn, I should have paid more attention in Sylvan class. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want my cook? Do you want some of my cookie? His his stomach like audibly crumbles and he's like, mm. fine. Okay. I'll have some of your cookie. You Thank go. you, Ricaria. You're welcome. And he um, like breaks okay. off a piece. Um, Ricaria will go up to Riley and the others as well and say, Do you want some of mine as well? We can all share. Well, I'm I'm trying to watch my figure. Um, you look really good. I don't think yeah. You need to. So, so you look at me and you see that head to toe, I'm. Uh, I wear traveler's clothes, but they're extremely well fit. Obviously, tailor made precisely for my size and shape. <clears throat> Perfect fit. Um, no, thank you though. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go up to everyone else. Cookie. I appreciate it, but I'm gonna get my own. Okay. The Minotaur looks to you. What can I get you? Um, can I get one of those lovely glitter cookies? Of course. Take it. Punch. Okay. So everyone has a punch except for Kalik. And yeah, you get Kaylik. the same thing. Get a fl large flower petal with a cookie on it. Mm. I've always been curious about this one. Yeah. Thank you. So as the group of you begin to enjoy your various treats, uh, you realize, Lavelli, that the wine is non-alcoholic. Oh. <laughs> Lavelli um, is immediately disappointed. The cookies seem to be dusted with particles of fairy dragon euphoria gas. <laughs> so anyone who just had a piece of cookie, you feel great. And it's not like... You feel great. It's not like... Um, super disorienting or like you know you don't feel inebriated or anything you still have your senses you just have a really good time everything's just a <sighs> little funnier right now it was like laughing gas yeah I'm really glad I only had a small piece of this <laughs> uh, good thing Ricardo didn't eat the entire cookie by herself <laughs> no, yeah. you get the sense that it wouldn't have been that strong like you would have been fine This you underestimate great. her weakness to cookies. Oh, I love cookies. Oops. It's your Lancelot, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so Riley, you're holding this giant head shape, head sized lollipop 
Um, it looked like a great idea. It's definitely party size. Um, do you guys have pockets? Maybe you want some? <laughs> it's, God, it's so sticky. <laughs> oh, no. Um, well, uh, it, I feel like, oh, no. I can't really do anything for you. I'm sorry. I can help you eat it. <laughs> I, I think Karia so. realizes um, she has no pockets. Yeah, this is <laughs> just a dress. It's just a dress that was given to her by Riley. Yeah, so I'm holding this this giant lollipop with two hands, and it's like, yeah, it's it didn't look this big. Uh, yeah, anybody who wants to take a piece, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it otherwise. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you can take a piece of a lollipop. You just kind of have to lick it. Maybe like knock a chunk off with your <laughs> dagger. <laughs> I don't have a dagger. It's all gone. I don't leave my books in this dress. You don't even have a dagger? No. I why did- why did you get can, the lollipop can, if you weren't going to eat like, the whole thing? I can use the lollipop as a weapon. Well, my friend, my friend Nisa said lollipop, giant lollipops. Oh my god! I just, that. I remembered it. Oh. Uh, nice. Kalik is is kind of like still looking through the map and looking around and like mostly trying to ignore the lollipop conversation. But when Rikaria mentions, like, I don't have a dagger, just sort of absent-mindedly, he flips one out of it out of its um sheath on his on his hip and just holds it out handle first to her like not even turning to look just like i have a dagger here's a dagger take the dagger up the handle. oh oh thank you and i'll extend their hands and say thank you so much i will say just because it's fucking hilarious um if you want to use the lollipop as a club you can add a club to your inventory. <laughs> I don't fantastic. want to deprive Riley of their snack. Actually, actually, I'm like encouraging Ricaria to oh. <laughs> please take um, this. Here, why don't you hold this and I, let, me, okay. let me knock a little chunk off with my, my own digger. Okay. And say, like, oh, okay, this is good. And I kind of turn and I kind of walk yeah. away. <laughs> if you take a chunk off, does that make it a sight now? <laughs> we'll stab people with this. Mm. Oh my God. Kalik, as you're looking at the map, please tell me when to stop. God dang it. Thanks, Bird of Chaos. I wonder Bird of Chaos? Be. <laughs> stop. No, no, no. No. Draw again. <laughs> what? I'm not, again? I'm not giving you another fucking night. Oh, <laughs> no, no. See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect a bunch of them, make them into a party, and then send them off on their own. Oh my god, okay. a you know party. what? All right, fine. Yes, yes, for yes, some yes. reason, for some reason, Yay. you see that Sir, Sir, um, yeah, sir. what's his name? Sir Martyr Resby, kind of trailing behind you, seems to have a f- made a friend, and they're kind of pointing towards you, like, yeah, you know what that is? That's Kalik. You just kind of hear that really oh, softly behind you, kind of in the distance. It's super unimportant and not worth your time. Mm. But mm-hmm. wow, thanks for the well, night. Jeez. No problem. You're welcome. Now we're going to have yeah. a Kalik fan club. This is going to be great. God. We're going to get as, into a battle. As the they rest should of us be. Are go as they should be. <laughs> and Kalik's just going to fight like a summoner with his knights out in front of <laughs> Quick, give me attack of opportunity. I need advantage. Go, go, go. Fantastic. Okay. Um. So, like, beside the food stall, as you're kind of wandering forward, you see the next one seems to be a series of games. You... Oh. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six different stalls here with different sort of activities going on. And the very first one catches your eye. <gasps> Oh. As you come up to the very first stall, you hear a voice saying, This El Mirage is no mirage, adorn its horn with two or three rings to win a prize. Oh, this game's always fun. So question, the, the El Mirage, is that a little creature? Is it moving around? As you kind of like look and hone in your senses here, you see that this is a game that seems to involve tossing rings over the horn of a wooden statue. You see this statue is a cute bunny-like creature with a horn on its head, kind of like a unicorn. Mm-hmm. 
You see the attendant is gathering up the various rings. And as you're peering, Riley, they sort of loom forward. You see this is a Yanti. They say, Would you like to try your hand at the Almirage ring toss? Oh, that's so cute, but it's I'm, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. Um, maybe, maybe one of my friends, they're talented and have daring do. Um, Are there prizes? Yes, many prizes. All of these stalls here, kind of gesturing to the other game stalls. You can win a prize. Oh, yes. I'll give it a try. Kalik in involving food. Don't touch anything. It's Faye. Kalik, as soon as he hears prizes, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Okay. Um, so, you are given three rings. Give Hi. me three dexterity checks, please. Oh, three dexterity checks. I can do dexterity checks. And you well, only in one theory. person. <laughs> Ooh, that's a 22. Wow. Mm -hmm. 24. Mm -hmm. 25. Ooh. Holy shit. Yes. yes. One okay. yourself every time. <laughs> so, wow. So, every time you throw a ring, poof, the Amirage teleports around the tabletop, making it hard to score success. You see it poof, disappear here, poof, disappear here. But describe to me how you fucking nail it in all three of them absolutely land uh can uh takes these rings and he's watching it move and he spots that it like has a favorite spot and so he starts to wait until he thinks it's going there and then tosses it and then waits till it's going to go there and tosses it and the last one he just has an inkling that that's not where it's going and he just tosses it off to a random corner and that happens to be where it teleports over to. Excellent. Wow. And you'll, you'll see Chester sort of walk up as he sees this happen like, oh, that's Kalik. I've never seen anyone do like that. That's impressive. Uh, well, uh, it was not uncommon to practice uh, throwing daggers most afternoons. Uh, I have a good love for them, though. I've never been uh, never been favorable to using them in combat. Too small. Ah, okay. Yeah. The Yanti is just clapping up a storm. You see that there are a number of people kind of gathered watching, and there's oohs and ahs. And the Yanti says... Congratulations! You've landed all three rings! You get two prizes today! <gasps> oh! Double prize! Oh, that's right! The, the double prize if you get them all! You get a wand shoved into your hand. It looks <gasps> kind of like the Almirage's horn. And then right. in your other hand is a small blue egg. It kind of feels like a rock. Ooh. Ooh. What would I use to attempt to identify these things? Your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the strict saving campaign. <laughs> Look, they said hey. eat everything. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> plug, yes. If you're into Magic the Gathering, guess what? They have a strict haven D and D coming out, and if you want to get a free. Like, really quick live preview, you can check me out on Runaway Robot's channel. The book doesn't uh -huh. come out until, like, I don't know, January or something. But you can First week of December, because I pre ordered it. Uh, <laughs> December. Ha ha. Ha ha. Lavelli uh. looks like super interested now, and she wants to take a try. Okay. Uh, the Yanti oh. gathered. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what these things are, because I'm going to forget. Okay. Um, and I don't like micromanaging inventories. So you get a petrified robin's egg. Uh, it's just a trinket, so it doesn't have any magical qualities. But the wand has eight charges. That wand, eight charges of prestidigitation. Oh, wonderful. It cannot be recharged. I'm all sticky. I'm going to need that. <laughs> <laughs> The lollipop's just stuck to her face. <laughs> it's in my hair. Oh no! Oh, oh no! 
Oh my if god. If it's stuck in her it's hair, like, he will absolutely use one of the uses to unstick it. Yeah, it's just like some of that pink, like that's in the front, not the side, like because the sides are shaved and then like the big pink part in the front. It's like, <laughs> oh you, my you, no. you, tr- you tried to lick it down near the base, but the top of the <gasps> Galali pop just. <laughs> As someone with Thank super you. long hair, I'm always super scared of gum and sticky things. I'm actually banned from a certain type of gum because I kept getting it in my hair. <laughs> the uh, Yonti gathers up the three rings and holds them out to you, Lavelli. Good luck! Well, thank you. That's a 23, a 23, and a Jeez. 24. Oh. Nat 20. Oh. Same thing. <laughs> you see the poof, 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 but you land all three. What does this look like? Uh, So, Lavelli kind of just stares at it for a minute and completely loses track of it, shrugs, and just gently tosses all three rings at the same time, and it just happens to land all three right on it. Oh I love God. the different approaches. Oh, <laughs> wow. Two people today have gotten the double prize. Oh my... <sighs> oh my stars! That is, this has never happened before! Wow. It has been a very long time since I've seen this. If ever, yeah. Maybe never. You get two prizes. Here are your prizes. You get a bottle of wine shoved into your <laughs> hand. <laughs> hey! The valley looks very excited. And in the other hand, they say, can can you hold out your hand for me? The, the I need you to, to to make a make a mouth with it. Go like this. <laughs> the valley will sock puppet. Holds and then the a glove puppet in the shape of a wizard gets put on your hand. Yes. As an action, you can move the puppet's arms to cast the minor illusion cantrip. After three uses, the puppet disappears in a puff of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that oh so God. much. The color suits you. And the wine, if you uncork it, it plays Calliope music until it's emptied. Oh, great. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Wait, before you go, let me punch your tickets. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> This looks so easy. Um, you should try it. I, I, I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Are you feeling it, Riley? I, I'm bad at these things. I normally. really hope they both dress. You, you are amazing. You are wonderful. You can do this. I Here, take take my ticket, please. Yeah, go Punch. go. All right. They gather up the three rings and offer it to you, Riley. Oh. If there was any day, Riley, for this to be for you to win, it'd be today. There's such luck in the air. Jester, can can you help me? I will help you. Um, no. How does he help? No, no, no. no helping. The Yonti puts a hand up. That's, unless uh, unless you give me a punch, you can't help. I want to play. I don't know if I want to give up a punch for that. So, I'll, I'll moral support. All right. And you see them procure three more rings and offer it out to you. Oh, I'll take them as well. I'll so let... you can do it at the same time. Oh, oh, at the same time. Okay. Oh, uh, together I've seen two people play this at the same time, but best of luck. We call a deficiency at the table. Um. So go uh, ahead I, and. I roll guess I should. Okay. Decks. Yeah, three decks. Uh, three decks rolls. One, two from Riley. Three from Riley. Riley, all three of them miss. Terribly. Oh, oh no. Chester. Little, Chester, you, you little, miss one. And then the <laughs> next two land. Nice. So tell me what happens here. We'll start with Riley. You miss all three of them. Uh, I knew this would happen. Hmm. Game's a chance. But is, is it really game of chance? I think it's a game of skill. Oh, I don't know. Chester, you missed the first one Mm -hmm. with a 15, and then your two 19s land. 
So I think what Chester in his mind is thinking is that he's always wanted to try these. It's been a very long time at least since he's tried these. And with everybody else's luck, he's like, I'm going to do this. And he's thinking, let me just try and copy everybody else. And he sort of tosses it. And that's the one that misses. Where he's like, you know what? Okay, no, I, I got I to gotta try and like imagine this myself. I've got to like not rely, you know, think on them. And so then he like concentrates and throws the other two and they land. Okay. Uh, after they land, you get a small clap, clap clap very good here's your prize and they thrust into your hand a replica unicorn horn filled with candy oh candy oh candy and uh, they're like oh let me make sure i punch your tickets and punch punch have a nice day thank you and the yeah. group begins to step off Lavelli looks like she doesn't know what to do with the hand puppet. <laughs> you can talk with it. Right? Yeah, you can do all kinds of cool magic stuff with it. And Those then, are really fun. Uh, and then she looks over at Ricaria, who's currently holding a bunch of stuff that other people have handed to her. There's a lollipop, and, and their books are like over their back, and they've used vines like as a backpack to secure them, so they don't have to carry them. And then she just puts the puppet on one of Ricaria's oh. horns. Oh. So you like wrap it on you like move a bunch of flowers like they kind of like drip down like onto her shoulder and stuff it's like oh oh okay That's thanks so funny <laughs> she's gonna hold all the things <laughs> as the group is like moving along you can see that the next stall seems to be kind of empty you see that there is a wooden um kind of like vertical door that keeps people out as you kind of walk up you see that there's a witch light hand in here uh she is kind of leaning against the counter and looks kind of bored and upon seeing all of the various treasures that you're carrying the, the candy horn and the the wand and the puppet on ricaria's horn they perk up oh hello perhaps you'd like to um Give it a shot. Prizes, prizes, prizes. Catch the fairy dragon by the tail and win a piece of its hoard. <gasps> a, a piece of its what? Hoard. Hoard. I think that means stuff. Um, I have a question. Can we use magic? <laughs> um, no, unfortunately oh. not. Um, please don't cheat. I okay. might get fired. <laughs> I mean, it's only cheating if you say she can't use it. Why would you get fired if they cheat? Well, there are rules. The well, rules what are, are use your rules? hands. Oh, hands. Okay. Lavelli looks over at Chester. The, the one who should know all these rules? Yeah, I'm... <laughs> I'm not in. I'm not entirely sure. Sorry, I was a little mesmerized with my candy unicorn horn. Uh, could you repeat to me again? These rules about how they'll get fired if someone cheats. Oh yes, no, we, we can't. We can't cheat. I, uh, I actually almost got caught with that with Riley. I completely forgot about that and all the excitement. Um, yeah, you you can get fired, and a lot of bad things can happen if you cheat. Godfather Ray, thank you so much for the natural 20 for Lavelli. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <gasps> thank you, Godfather. That's Heck yeah. That's instant success in your pocket that you can use anytime you want. I'll wait for the worst possible moment to use it. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so you see the attendant kind of sheepishly hold up a blindfold, and they open up the counter and say, all you have to do is just try to grab it. That's it. Please don't. Please don't do anything else. Okay, I'll try it. And they hold out their ticket. You see her smile really warmly and her eyes are kind of shiny. And she says, thanks. Uh, mm. Yeah, and punch. Now go in. Okay. And they kind of hesitate and they're like, it's all right if I put this blindfold on you. Oh, yeah. Haven't had anyone do that before, but okay. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be safe. Don't worry. I won't let anything okay. happen. Oh. And they kind oh. of 
wrap their arms around you as they're oh. pulling it over your <laughs> eyes and they are very careful with your horns and the flowers and you can feel that like as they're kind of like closing it they're like oh let me just move this i don't want to squish it and they oh. adjust a flower and bloop. all hey. right thank you you're welcome do you want me to hold anything for you? <laughs> um, well, I have this lollipop, <laughs> if you'd like to hold it. I'll I'll hold that for you. Thank you. It's kind of sticky. Watch out. It got stuck in my hair earlier. <laughs> There's like hair. Like, <laughs> hair on it. <laughs> and, the, and the mood was ruined. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pink and brown. Yeah, you see them holding it arm's length and they back out of the booth and you hear the wood drop. And then you hear a <laughs> just a disembodied giggling kind of floating around you. All right, you only have three chances. Roll me okay. three perception checks. Vavelli opens oh the wine bottle and has Calliope music playing during this. <laughs> no, I can't hear! I can't hear! <laughs> so, according to the description, it doesn't ever stop until you empty the wine. Oh, well, I thought Chug, it was when Chug. you open it. It's no. so when you open it, it starts playing music, but it yeah. says it stops when you finish the bottle. Oh, yeah. Not when okay. you recork yeah. it, it is yeah. playing until you are done. Yeah, she yeah. doesn't know that. She opened yeah. it. You opened it. Uh, it smells really lovely. It has like floral hints to it. It seems to be a lighter sort of wine, kind of like a rose. All these extra rules and conditions and circumstances. <clears throat> All right. So you rolled a 23, a 7, and a 19. Good thing you didn't get that, uh, <laughs> that one there. Okay. <laughs> so the very first time you reach out, you manage to close your hands around an invisible thing. Nobody else can see anything, but you feel it. You feel in your hand something warm, and it's kind of smooth to the touch. And you feel it kind of wiggling around in your grip, just... <laughs> You hear oh. the little glittery sounds of uh, wings fluttering. Oh, sorry. Um, I think I I got them. They're sorry. Oh. I don't want to hurt you. Uh, the attendant quickly like rushes in and removes your blindfold, and all of a sudden, everyone sees blinking into existence. Is a little creature in Ricaria's hand. It's adorably oh. terrifying. I love. Them. Aww. Oh, look at that. You're really sweet and cute. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of like rolls around in your grip and it's like kind of nudging one of its head frills over to your thumb. Oh, and they'll kind of begin to lightly pet it. It's like, it's okay. It starts What's purring like a cat. Oh, they're so cute. Uh, or it, it just keeps it. It doesn't respond to you. Uh, but it just keeps doing what it's doing. Um, oh, you win a prize. Congratulations. A prize. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh, we know your languages now. Mm. I was trying to like, expand that. It did not uh, work. So just let chat know in case you were curious. Lavelli can speak common, Aarakocra, and Auron. What's Auron? Auron is... Auron is... Uh, it's pirate Auron. Air, is air elemental languages. Yeah, it's a primordial language. Nice. That'll come in handy. <laughs> yeah, no. All right. Um, so she kind of like sheepishly reaches into like a big box of stuff. She reaches up and on your other horn puts a glove puppet of a wizard. So now oh. you have two. Wait, really? Yay! Yeah. Oh, yay. It's a wizard! Look at him go back and forth. <laughs> the they, start, they start fighting. Are you still the holding the fairy around. dragon as you're doing that? Yeah. <laughs> the fairy dragon in my hand. Yeah, and it's just like giggling. It's having a great time. <laughs> oh, um, I should probably give them back to you. Oh, no, it looks in their hands. Yeah. As you do, uh, you open your hand and it just pink, winks out of existence and you just hear a disembodied giggling around your head. <laughs> and you just get the very sticky giant oh. lollipop back. Thank you. Um, what's what's your name? My name? Yeah, yeah. I'm Ricaria. Nice to meet you, Ricaria. My name is Bailey. Bailey, that's a really pretty name. How long do you work? 
Um, I've been working for the carnival for four years. When do you get oh. off? No, yeah. still like, you know what time you, you shift over? Yeah, you know, you shift over. Do you have a break? Or... Oh, oh, you see a blush take her features and it just goes all the way to her ears. Oh, um, yeah, I'll have a break, um, after, after they crown the, um, the monarch. Oh, when's that? And where's that? It's at dawn. What is that? At it'll dawn. be in. it'll be over and then she gestures and you see down the thoroughfare there is an extremely large tent all the way at the very end it's in the big, big top. top there will actually be an event uh pretty soon it'll be in about four hours um a big top extravaganza don't worry you'll know when it's time and then Right before dawn, we will crown the witch like mark witch light monarch. Ooh. Well Yes. That's, that's always been a really fun ceremony. And I'm excited for it. And mm. maybe I'll see you after. Oh, I Up to you. I would like that. Nice. Right. And Ricaria smiles and looks off with the rest of them and uh you hear like a <clears throat> and she just like slams the the booth closed and says uh we need to clean up some of this um sap and just like kind of close the shop and they disappear inside the booth hmm? oh. the battle of the shy girls <laughs> who did ricardo shy <laughs> <laughs> i I felt like she was very direct. Yeah. <laughs> she can be. Uh, Lavelli goes up to Calic and just hands him the non-alcoholic wine. Thank you. It's got no teeth. And then she goes to tr goes back to drinking the Calliope wine. <laughs> You're an Aracocra. You have no teeth. Actually, I think some birds do have teeth. I don't know. Lavelli, can you birds open have your teeth. mouth? I didn't know that. Can we see? Do you have teeth? <laughs> she, do you have teeth? <laughs> she takes a big swig and then opens her uh, her raven mouth. Be <laughs> Ricario are, will look inside. There are no teeth. As Vertigo frantically Google searches, do ravens have teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Not that teeth. I don't know. You're putting me on a watch list. <laughs> <laughs> and are going to be coming after me. For, uh, for murder research? Uh, get it. Because yeah. uh, murder is a group of crows. Favorites. I don't know. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> All right. All dead to me. <laughs> well, as you as you kind of contemplate murder or not murder, <laughs> you're holding the map. You see up ahead there is a little Calliope machine off to the side. What do we need that for? I don't know what that is. Uh, so you will be this little marker here. So you just gotta decide what direction you want to go. You have the map in front of you. You see the entire fair all around. What, what is a Calliope machine? It's an instrument. So it's basically a wagon-sized instrument. Um, it plays like a little like music. Okay. Really, being a pirate is very familiar with instruments. Okay. So it's like a crank-based instrument. I didn't know I had to Google it, and I don't think I could find like a... Uh... Well, when, when you first said it, I was thinking of the Greek muse Calliope, which is the muse of comedy, and therefore didn't understand what you were like when there's like, there's a, there's a Calliope machine, and I'm like, a comedy machine? Yeah, you're, you're well, basically... So now I understand. It's a jaunty yeah. tune. Okay. Yeah, as soon as Lavelli opened the bottle, he started hearing Paul Blart Mall Cop play. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the movie, it's not. 
Yeah, and as you're wandering away from the stalls, you hear very similar music coming from before you. I think you'll sort of naturally walk into it as I force everyone forward. Um, a merry tune spills forth from an instrument on the back of a brightly painted wagon. A monkey wearing a cloak covered with buttons turns a handle at the wagon's rear, sending music into the air on the rows of golden whistles. As you watch, a goblin dressed as a ladybug toddles up to you, rattling a tin cup. Uh, <clears throat> Pister will walk up and put some silver pieces into the cup. As you're about to, they yank the cup away. Oh. They narrow their eyes at you. And then all of a sudden, you hear the monkey in the cloak, a baboon, speaks up and says, Spare a button, if you please. I'll sew it next to all of these. I offer nothing in its place besides a smile upon my face. Oh, um, I guess he'll check his pockets for an extra button and find one and puts it in the bucket. Uh, so <clears> the <throat> goblin puts out the tin, takes your one button, and then the baboon smiles. And then... <clears throat> <laughs> Big baboon full teeth smile. And then mm. the goblin turns expectantly towards the others, kind of rattling the cup. I have no buttons. Why? I'm sorry. Why do you even want buttons? I mean, I'm not opposed to giving you buttons, but I don't understand your interest. What do you get out of this other than a button? The goblin smiles and says, Oh, it's just for a bit of fun. Don't you say it makes, it makes Ernest smile? She does a little dance as a ladybug. Kaelic will, will turn around and look for uh, some martyr. Uh, martyr. <laughs> Give us oh. your buttons. <laughs> so as the camera kind of pans behind the party, you see Sir Martyr Resby, a very dignified looking halfling knight, uh, is currently halfway through a blue cupcake. And you see there's smears of blue frosting on their face, and they're currently talking to someone who's also a knight. And <laughs> <laughs> they kind of waddle up and they say, What can I do to assist you, my liege? My uh, my pack, please. <gasps> Absolutely! And they sort of push the rest of the cupcake in their mouth and their cheeks are bulging. And then they drop down on one knee, open your backpack and present it to you. Uh, Calyx going to fetch out his disguise kit and go rummaging around. And just a handful of misfit buttons, and just drop it in the in the jar because the disguise kit just has a crap ton of them. How many would you like it to be? Mm, let's say five. Five buttons. Okay. You As... know, if you want to know for lore reasons, twenty-one's the new gay number. Yeah. The context I... there. <laughs> a lot of buttons. <laughs> The context there is there was something silly going on in Vertigo's chat, and someone said, "Me, me." I think it was like me it was, twenty-one. It was, it was supposed to be me too, but they wrote yeah. me twenty-one, and then I giggly. said, "I said that twenty-one's new gay number." Yeah, uh -huh. that's it. Yeah. That's the joke. Okay, okay. this was all a solid yeah. joke. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, nope. uh, as you put the five buttons, clink, 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 clink. You, you see them look at each other, and they seem very pleased. The goblin starts dancing, and the monkey continues to turn and says, Thank you so much, and they smile nice and big. The tin gets offered to everybody oh. else. You did, you did very well, Marta. Thank you. <gasps> My liege, anything else I can do to assist you? Not at the moment. Please stop pestering me. <laughs> Very well. Close up the pack and they just kind of waddle away, fading into the background. 
Lavelli shoots Kaylick a look at that. What? The officer's assistance, I no longer needed it. You could stand to be a bit kinder. I mean, perhaps. I think Rukaria will come look at Riley and say, <laughs> hey, um, after we get the stuff, well, if we can find, like, our stuff, I, I don't know exactly what we're trying to find, uh, from the last pro- property place, we should, like, find a place maybe to sit down, and then we could play chess. Oh, you want to play chess? Yeah, and also we can test Chester. Well, you can test Chester, because I... I I'm and Marta and his new friend. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. You've triggered Riley's special dialogue. <laughs> 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 completely. Completely. Yes. Um, oh, there, there's no I, doubt we will. We will. Um, I, I I did promise you. I I don't know how much of it. I, I, I don't know how well of, I will be at it, but I promised you to give it a shot. So. <laughs> don't worry. I'm sure you're going to be great. If not, you're going to learn. I would love to learn. Um, also, right over there is our lost property area, if that's where we want to go next. Um, I may not know myself all the best in the forest, but I definitely know where I'm going around here. The party moves on? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The group so Valley does not own buttons. Okay. So I, I'm like looking back and it's just like, I'm, I'm counting my buttons and... and... And I mumbled to myself, well, I have precisely the exact number of buttons I need. Why do they want buttons? Uh, I don't know. Okay. All right. The group of you have in front of you a variety of directions to go. As you're kind of looking around, you do see the lost property is within walking distance here. You can see that it is namely a wagon that's kind of large and boxy in shape you can see very clearly there's a sign that says lost property and you see um towards your north you can enter through an archway and there seems to be a large carousel uh you see that there are some wooden horses in the distance um there is something of a lake towards the north directly from you and the big top is right next to you in fact as you're looking at the big top You see, the roof of this tent reaches towards the night sky in three swooping peaks topped with spinning gold stars. Painted wooden panels on the tent walls whirl with colorful motion, displaying vibrant circus performances. The sound of music and laughter drifts through the canvas door. From looking around right now, you can see that it seems like they're still setting up. There are no people really going in other than what looks like performers. So they don't seem to be quite ready yet. While looking over the map, Lavelli will just lean slightly over uh, to Rikaria's shoulder and just whisper, you should take her to the gondola swans later. Maybe. I mean, honestly, I was just trying to, I don't think I've ever really done that before. I just trying something new. (laughs) <laughs> I'm an adventurer and everything and I think adventurers have to be like bold and brash and everything then... should be bold and brash she takes, she takes a swig of the wine it's still playing the music <laughs> yes mm-hmm. is the wine good? she holds it out Oh, okay. and then adjusts the giant lollipop into the other arm and takes a a tentative swing, <laughs> swig of this wine. A swig, just the smash. It's like a rosé. It's very light. Oh, everything's a weapon, Vicaria. Ooh, I don't drink that much. This is nice. I'll pass it back. No, Ellie drank a lot. Big pirate. Oh. <laughs> Which way Uh-oh. do you want to go? I'll I'll guide anyone where they want to go, where wherever we we would uh, like to go. Let's go to our lost property. It might be worth checking there first, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. we, let's, we're all agreed. Let's go to the lost property. You go to the lost Zoom. property. Yo. Very good. As you make your way forward, outside the lost property wagon is a large feline creature. 
who lost the cat. <gasps> oh! This is so pretty! Look at that! Look at the baby! It could eat that child. <laughs> How many legs does it have? You like, see like, a large... Like a car. Yeah. You see a large feline creature with midnight blue fur. It has a pair of tentacles extending from its shoulders and wears fake butterfly wings. Hanging from its collar is a small wooden keg. The creature is currently roughhousing with two young boys. One of the boys squeals, Again, Derla, again! While the other hangs onto the creature's neck. Uh, yeah, it has, um, six legs. Stella looks harder at the picture. Yeah, Ooh, the six picture legs. legs. Uh, can six. I do, like, a nature or some sort of check to identify this creature? Yeah. Because is fascinated. Yeah, I'm going to say that this is going to be a bit of an uncommon creature, so this is going to be a oh. disadvantage for anyone who wants to roll nature or history. What about what I? What about myself? Uh, you too, Chester. Ooh, five. <laughs> Nature, you said. Or history, whatever you like. Thirteen. Mm. Actually, I think Chester. Uh, just this is a normal for Chester. Oh, that's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll go history. Okay. Car is like flipping through like their books that they have. They're like, I don't know, I have it. It's not in here. Five for Ricaria, that's a 12 for Riley, a 13 for Lavelli, a 13 for Kalik, and a 20 for Chester. Okay, Chester, um, you mm -hmm. know about Durlagron. Uh, you know that they basically help take care of children by the lost things here. Mm -hmm. uh, they are part of the circus, but you've never really interacted with them before. You've never really okay. had a reason to before. As for what exactly they are, um, I'll say that you know that they are a displacer beast. Oh god, no. <laughs> <laughs> New friend. But you don't really have the context of like, I fought mm. one of these, or, you know, yeah. I have this predisposition about them. You don't really know about them very much. Uh, I've been traumatized by them. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry for traumatizing you. What, it was like, five years ago now that's how trauma works i'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. i used mm. i used displacer piece in my campaign hold on i'm, I'm about to, i'm about to heal your trauma here <laughs> so as you as the group of you are watching uh you see that this large feline creature is just very gently guardianing over these two young children uh, this is where we would go for uh, finding. Um, and I guess he'll he'll go up and be like, "Hello." Um, what was the name again? Durlagron or Durla? Durlagron. Durla. I'm gonna go Durla. That'll be easier. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, hello, Durla. Uh, my name is Chester. Um, I have a couple of uh, friends with me as well as myself who are possibly looking for some lost items. If you'd seen any. I, I don't usually come around this very many parts, but I try to help out with the circus as much as I can. Durla looks up to you, and as they speak, um, you can tell that their ability to speak is somewhat magically enchanted. You don't know how, but the words are kind of accented, and the jaw doesn't quite move in a way that seems natural. You can tell that this is assisted speech. And uh, they say, what can I help you find? You are more than welcome to check the wagon. Okay. Um, and then he'll he'll turn back to the group and go, well, <clears throat> we are more than welcome to check the wagon. Uh, whoever wants to go first. Who all was missing things? All of us. I didn't lose anything. You don't? Oh, well, us four then. Yeah. Riley, do you want to? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think so. Walk up to the wagon. Is there like a door or a ladder? Uh, Yeah. So there's a set of like wooden steps that come down and 
You're able to, it's open, it's all visible. You can see that there are a number of bins set up inside of it. And even just at a glance, you can tell it's a giant mishmash of all sorts of trinkets and objects, mostly junk. I step in there and um, kind of pensively look around and it's like, uh, lots of things in here. I, I'm not sure if I'd find what I'm looking for. As you say that, um, you hear Durla Gron kind of, they, they turn their heads, they're looking at you, and you hear their voice softly say, Sometimes things go missing from the Witchlight Carnival and never come back. Do you know where they keep uh, older lost items? Uh, I believe most of my compatriots lost theirs uh, some near a decade ago. Eight years, to be exact. About. You see Durlagron oh. open their mouth as if to speak. And I think, Riley, as you're kind of like poking around, something just like your your clothes just brush very lightly against something. And you see a small spherical object, like a mirrored ball, just sort of bounces out side and it rolls onto the ground and you see one of the children who's swinging on Durla kind of <laughs> jumps down and reaches for the ball and all of a sudden Durla Gron snaps forward with a snarl and the child pulls back startled uh, sorry the child starts crying and runs away oh no uh, sorry I, I, I just kind of bumped that I'll go chasing after the kid, or Kalik will go chasing after the kid. Okay. Kalik starts running. You see Durlagron's ears immediately flatten, and you see a look of great remorse and regret on their face as they're sort of pawing this, this ball, this silvery ball, closer to them. And they look like they want to make chase, mm. but there's another child here. Um, I can, I can look after the other kid if you want to go... Follow Kalik. No, I cannot leave this place. It is my duty to stay here. I... You want me to put that thing back? No, uh... no. I did not mean to put it in there. You see them kind of like almost possessively hold it close. <clears throat> what does it look like, the object? So it looks like a toy. It's definitely a toy. It's literally just a ball with a mirrored surface on it. So it's very, very shiny. The you, toy. It doesn't look like it's very um, squishy or malleable or anything like that. It's a solid thing. Mm. And it like it hit the ground and it didn't break or anything. So Kalik is running. Does anyone else want to join Kalik? Mm. Oh, oh, goodness. And Ricaria will turn. I'm coming! Wait! Please! <laughs> Is that for just oh, swinging no. around a giant lollipop? Two just... wizards waving their arms. Yeah, the just little, like sucks, like... sucks, sucks, sucks. Suck. They're just like, oh, they're oh my god! It's it's like, like the little hands. it's like the inflatable like waving things yeah. outside of stores. Tube, man. Yeah, except they're yeah. little tiny wizards. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so, okay. uh, Kalik is really fast. And probably ends up leaving Rikaria behind a little bit because as of level two, I can use a bonus action to dash. So I can use my action to dash, then move, then dash as a bonus action. So I'm like sprinting after this after this kid. I'm hauling ass. Yeah, so like as you're kind of chasing after the kid, there's like and really, really unfortunate, like, wave of people passing, crossing the thoroughfare, and they've got these big, bulky items, and you gotta, like, weave around them, and, like, and then you keep running and running, and then you kind of stop for a second. Give me a perception check. Uh, I'm okay at those. Fifteen. Okay. You're looking around, and you just happen to see something in the corner of your eye. You almost miss it, but you see the flurry of a mop of brown hair fleeing in the distance, so you know which way to go, but they are some distance away from you, so you keep running. 
so I know in combat you can do like an acrobatics roll to tumble through people's uh, opponent's squares. Mm -hmm. Could I do an acrobatics to try and move through this crowd a little faster? Yeah, absolutely. Give me an acrobatics check. I'm good at acrobatics. Well, <laughs> I'm supposed to be good at acrobatics. That was a nat one into a seven. All right. Fantastic. So we'll kind of pause there for a second. Uh, Ricaria, you're trying to chase and you see this like wave of people just kind of cross by. Oh, oh god, sorry, sorry, excuse me, sorry, sorry, excuse me, gotta get by, just going oh god, around you. No. Ricaria. So <laughs> they, like, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, there's like a couple of people on stilts and they're trying not to step on oh. you and it's really chaotic, right? They are very up in your face. There's um, a camel that kind of like walks by as well. You know, there's all sorts of creatures and people and you're kind of spinning and spinning and spinning. And you realize, oh, you've kind of been walking as you've been maneuvering through here. You're lost. You have drawn the void card. Oh no. You have no idea where you are. You're gonna be somewhere randomly on the map. I mean, oh. that's that's the same as usual for her. Uh, uh, Kalik, Chester, Riley. Valley, and they just start walking around calling out their names. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. um, Ricaria does get an idea though, they're gonna find uh, a private place to go. Um, and I would like to use wild shape to shape into the form of a wolf Ooh. with the wings still on their back, mm -hmm. uh, as they shift into it. And it's this, uh, it kind of looks like, um, just like this very fluffy, fuzzy, uh, like a white wolf with some little pink and white or pink and black streaks in it. Um, and they still have like the horns that are just very small, just behind their ears and Sir Lancelot's still around their neck. Um, <laughs> and they start like sniffing around <clears throat> trying to find people. Okay. As you are sniffing around trying to find people, Sir Lancelot kind of cranes forward and makes eye contact with you. The little snake head turns the eyes on you. And we have this moment of just contact. You've also drawn the vizier card. You can ask one question wow. and get an answer. <laughs> wow. You asked if this was a normal snake. Uh -huh. but Where are my friends? Gonna, um, do, you want, do you just want to answer it now? That's okay. Go ahead. I was going to give you a minute to think. Oh, the immediate question is, where okay. are my friends? <laughs> it's up to you. You don't have to ask that. Oh, no. It's literally immediately on Rikaria's mind. Where, Like, where are my friends? But in just going, woof, woof, woof. Yeah. The and snake. I, the, <laughs> Sir Lancelot, tongue flicking the air, begins to, like, slowly kind of tug at you. They're like, their head is, like, resting right underneath your chin. And they're kind of able to, like, tell you which way to go. So you're going to make your way through the crowd here. As a wolf wearing fairy wings. I love it. <laughs> that, <laughs> my goodness. All right. Uh, so the camera fades to black. And then we are back over by Durlagron. Lavelli and Chester, you were there alongside them. You can see their head kind of lift up as another crowd of people come by. It's not Kalik. It's not the kid. It's not Rikaria. And they look very dour. Lavelli is kind of in a, like a trance the whole time. Arms crossed, just sort of staring at a Durlagon before she shakes her head a bit and like finally takes stock of what's going on around her. Mm -hmm. um, the other kid continues to roughhouse Durlagon and you see them kind of hanging off of one of the tentacles and slips and it rips one of the butterfly wings. They're like, oh no, Durla, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. And Durla kind of like limply moves the butterfly wing around and says, it's all right, my child. It's just a wing. Come here. Have some juice. And uh, kind of like lifts up their head and you see there's this keg right underneath their neck. And they pour a little bit of drink and the kid sits down and starts to have some juice. Oh um. Now that she has snapped out of it, Lavelli is going to fly up and take into the air and head off in the direction Kalik went to try and find him or the girl. 
for okay. the child. So Lavelli leaves. Chester, you're by yourself now. Wasn't Riley still there? Yeah, isn't Riley still here with me? Riley is on the wagon, rummaging yeah. at this point. Oh, okay. yeah. Since Durla kind of like... He's close. <laughs> since Durla kind of like, you know... Unless the wagon left with him. <laughs> kind, of, kind of shut down the line of questioning and and uh, Riley didn't want to dive too deep into that. Riley is instead diving into the bins. You hear just this crashing and, and, and the noise coming from the wagon. Okay, go ahead and roll me a 1D100. New trinket. No, it couldn't be that. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. 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 23. No. Just, you know, just a number. You know, that happens to be a bone knuckle set of dice with skulls on it. <laughs> uh, you get a ball and cup toy that plays a short victorious jingle whenever the ball lands in the cup. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's like it's a cup, yeah. right? With a string. With a string and then there's a ball and the the game is to like try to catch mm -hmm. the ball it's a ball in a cup yeah find a toy <laughs> hey do you keep it um i bring it out and I, I bring it out and i offer it to the kid the kid takes it starts oh. putting it in their mouth <laughs> how old is this kid um is their name sorry <laughs> no <laughs> no um uh, young younger than the other one that ran away okay but that means the the super young one didn't run away no so Durla I didn't find what I guess what I was looking for um any anywhere else to find things if it is dire, you might consider asking the masters of the carnival. However, yeah, I would suggest you tread carefully. Where, where do I find the, those? Yeah. <laughs> well, you will find Mr. Witch and Mr. Light in the Big Top during the Big Top extravaganza. They do spend their time elsewhere in the staff area, but it is off limits. You will not be given entrance there. Oh, that's like staff only, right? Precisely. Good to know. Hmm. You, you seem to have the task of watching people's children. Are they, I mean, is that your job? They kind of cant their head a little, and you can see that they are very, very down. They say, well, these two, their mother went off to get some food and refreshment for them, but sometimes, yes, lost people are also in my care. Lost people? That's, that's a terrible thought, scary thought. You would be surprised how many children get separated from their parents. I know, right? In fact, they sort of sigh and lower their head even more. In fact, my own child was lost. Star. And this was Star's favorite toy. And they bring up their big paw and they're holding up the mirrored ball. Where, Where's Star? I do not know. I mean, somewhere here or far away? I do not know. I do know in my heart that they are okay. But I have searched the carnival up and down. They are not with us. That's so sad. Side quest gained. I I know what it's like to be lost and sometimes alone. I, I hope they're with good people. I do do I do as well. And you see them kind of lower their head, and the kid is just like fucking around with a broken <laughs> butterfly wing now, like, wee! Well, I'm glad you're here. That's, that's really nice to know that a lost kid has somebody to watch over them. Well. That's, that's really nice. Uh, 
I'm trying to find a specific thing. Come on. <clears throat> so I'm going to hang out here and um, make small talk with Durla. And I probably, you know, sit and squat with my backpack and, and bring out a, dra a dragon chess set and, and kind of <laughs> fiddle with that for a little bit. And, and if they at all seem interested, I might engage them with that. Uh, Durla does not seem interested in playing a game right now. Every time someone comes up, um, they seem to like crane their head forward, hoping that it is Kalik with the child. Um, they say, um, it is important that the children are taken care of. They are the bright stars of our future. This is my duty and my charge. Yeah, I know. Du duty is a big deal. Um, I, I have duty too, to the local king and his family. You know, um, mm. if you feel good to have something important to do, mm. something to hang your hat on, something to to say that's that's what I do. So that's great. Well, I'll, I'll hang out here with you until my friends come back, I guess. Okay. So we'll say that the screen fades to black and we find Kalik again. Kalik, tell me what happens with this Nat 1 acrobatics here. Oh. Hey, Kalik tries to slip past somebody, but he didn't see that. Uh, on the other side of them, they were holding on to the hand of their child, not the child he's chasing down, but just another kid. And as he like comes around this person and is surprised, like, oh, there's another person. He scrambles to get his feet under him to, to like not run into this kid. And he just lands back first in the mud. You land in the mud, Karia. This is where you emerge. And you find Kalik in the mud as a wolf. Mm, Ricardo. You're a wolf, not me. <laughs> Everyone's a wolf. Wolf, ow! <laughs> you, um, your spell is too powerful. We're all wolves now. Yep. <laughs> wizards turn Kalik into a wolf. <laughs> the little wizards. The wizards are still there, like <laughs> on the ears. <laughs> on the ears. And Ricario pads up. To where Kalik is and kind of like squats a little um with like their front end down and their back end up like kind of playfully and they like kind of nudge Kalik with their nose uh Kalik recognizes the wings so he knows the Tricaria and like looks at her kind of rolls his eyes and like this is unbecoming of an adventurer Did you... Hold on. Can you smell the child? Mercaria starts smelling, putting their nose kind of to the ground, not squishing Sir Lance a lot, but we'll try to sniff out where the kid is. Roll me Just perception at off. advantage. Okay, so... Wolf. Um... I also um, do have... I think I uploaded them in the game. I do have the NPC versions of Ricaria as the wolf and the badger, I think. Okay. I will check that real quick. Uh, wolf and the badger. Oh, uh, yeah, I found it. <laughs> Sweet. I think I have. Yeah, there you go. It's at the very bottom. Plus four. Thank you. I think it's 1d20 plus four because I keep my stats. Is this giant toad yours too? No, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stella just has a giant toad oh, ready. I don't have access to the sheet. I can only see the bio and info. Oh shit! Hold on. <laughs> it's okay. Blocked from your. I'll own just form. roll. I'll just roll one d twenty no, plus no, four. No, twice. no, okay, okay. no. Just wait. You hold. Uh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> when you're a wolf, are you rough, Kara? <laughs> yeah, wolf, Kara. <laughs> wolf, Kara. Yeah. Uh. Uh, perception. I don't know if it's gonna roll with advantage. Right. Yep, twenty three. Absolutely. So as you are looking, you're sniffing around. You use your big old wolfy sniffer. You absolutely catch a trail. It is very fresh. 
you see their ears flatten back their one paw kind of come up and almost like kind of like a pointer dog they point in the direction with their snout where the child is and you see off to the side uh, the kid is currently hunched over in the shadow of a tent and they're crying I'm Calyx spots this and he's gonna raise his his new little prestidigitation wand because <laughs> uh, it can create like minor sensory effects. Uh, he's going to create a little uh, pixie that's gonna flit over to the creature and like a hey, try to like calm her down and cheer her up, but then like maybe lead back towards Kalik as they're headed towards towards her. Okay. Yeah. Um, this absolutely works. You see the child slowly begin to giggle and wipe tears away from their face and they begin to try to like reach for the pixie and they stand up and begin to chase and come towards the two of you. Hello, sweetie. Hello. You ran off. Uh, I, I was scared. That's understandable. But I'm sure that Dela didn't mean you any harm. No, I, I know. Do you want to go back? Okay, did you do that? Kind of gesturing to the pixie. I did. Do you know magic? Calyx's face kind of like probably not enough that the child can tell because they're child, but Ricaria can definitely see like his face falls just a little bit. No, I never really had the talent for magic. Oh, that's okay. Me too. Do you want to be a, a wizard? One day. Ricaria will like shake their head um, and the little wizards kind of bop <laughs> back and forth and they'll kind of <laughs> gesture towards the child. You've got an army. An army of wizards. Oof. That's what I do. On the back of a puppy. Oof. With a snake. <laughs> What's that? Is that a rope? Oof. They shake their head. Can I pet the puppy? She nods. She's like, ah, this kid just throws himself at you. I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm like, okay, what do, what do kids do? They want to pet the puppy. Mm -hmm. That's what kids want to do. Pet the big dog. They're like, can I ride the puppy? Oof. She nods. <laughs> kind of gets down, like crunches down a little Aww. bit so the kid can get on. The kid just like throws her arms around. I love you. And they, they, they get on top. What's your name, sweetheart? My name is Vero. Vero. Right, let's get up. Let's get you back. Okay. And, and Caleb will start heading off back towards the, uh, the lost property hut. Um, presumably with Ricaria in tow. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be right. right on your heels. So everyone <laughs> reconvenes here, and uh, you see that Durla immediately cranes up as you approach, and Vero hops off of Ricaria and runs over and uh, begins to roughhouse with uh, the other child. And Darla dips their head towards you and says, Thank you. It is much appreciated. Hmm. Lavelli mm -hmm. is going to slowly walk up to Darla. Mm -hmm. And when she's a couple of feet away, she's going to stare at Darla for another moment. How long have you been here? A very, very long time. I was gifted with a man. 
There's supposed to be... I don't know where I can find it. Um, there's supposed to be a sheet that has, like, backstory for Durla, and I just cannot find this, but I am going off of memory. Um, oh, score 20 years ago. Yeah, um, I was gifted the, um, the magic of language by uh, an elven court. I was part of a prestigious family. And let me just say that my tale has ended me up here. I'm quite pleased to be here. You will find there are very many good people here in the Witchlight Carnival. But I'm concerned. Mr. Witch and Mr. Light are on edge. If you are willing to investigate... I would say confronting them directly is not the course of action that I would advise. Hmm. You do not want to seek their ire. Or midge in what way? They seem troubled. They seem very concerned with the mood of the carnival. Hmm. Have there been fewer guests or something? Is the carnival itself in financial trouble? Not precisely. However, I have heard rumor that there is someone going around stirring trouble. You might want to keep an eye out for them. Trouble, you say? I don't know what they look like, but their name is Kettlestream. Oh. Would, um... Would Chester remember that name or recall that name at all? No, this is a new name you have never heard before. Okay. Good question, though. Uh, oh. Precisely what type of trouble has there been? <clears throat> and now you see that Riley is intensely interested, almost to the point like, oh, I got to hear this. Yeah, um, they seem to be serving all manners of discourse throughout the camp. They are disrupting some of the magic, the fun spoiling games and more or less dampening the mood of the carnival. Perhaps mm. if you wish to counter this, you could either confront them or seek ways to enlighten others and guests of the carnival itself. Any any tips? Any thoughts? <laughs> where where we should go to look? kind of like look around and they say well there are many attractions here in the carnival I would say you can take your pick as long as you play along have some fun laugh a little it should be of some help the energy that you make goes beyond your bubble no right the mute breaking, mood breaking Calliope music playing the entire time. <laughs> I reach for your bottle. <laughs> Valio pulls the bottle back. <laughs> it's going to run for the entire campaign. <laughs> uh, so Durla will more or less say thank you for helping. Uh, I should probably make sure that these kids are, you know, stay out of trouble and give them my whole attention and say, good luck. Let me know if you need anything else. Perla. Yes. About eight years ago, do you remember a small raven who looked a lot like me, but with a chip in their beak? I am so sorry. There have been many faces and many people through the long time that I've been here. It would be impossible for me to identify them specifically. I do hope you will find someone that you are looking for. Her, uh, her shoulders slump a bit and she just nods. And you see Durla kind of get up and they they're actually a very large creature, almost the size of a horse and they bring their head down and they nuzzle it right up against you and they purr and it has this like 
deep reverberation and just kind of shakes into you. You can feel it kind of echo through your bones, this very soft rumbling of comfort as they try to console you. There were very, you know, important things there about trouble at the at the carnival and apparently someone lost for Lavelli. I, I didn't want to interrupt, but you said you were given to the carnival by elves. Have you, you do you know the uh, the Alvaris by chance? Cassius and Delbert. <laughs> <laughs> like interrupting this very sweet moment to, to name drop. You know what? Story. All right. Perfect timing. Geek Dice, thank you so much for the card. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Tell me when to stop. We'll lightly stop. tug on Calyx's pants. This is why we keep giving Calyx cards. <laughs> the hem. You see Durla's eyes harden at the name drop and they say, I hope you never utter their name in my presence ever again. Oh, um. Do you want to continue kind this of line problem. of dialogue, Calic? Let them know you're related. <laughs> mortal, uh, yeah. en mortal enemy. <laughs> they say, they say, they had a direct hand in my separation from my family. You have drawn the skull card. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, uh, no. For some reason, your family, maybe not their fault, but they are taking the blame for Durla being separated from the elven court that they're from. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Y'all are like, okay, this is probably a good time to yep. go. I think um, I I don't know about the rest of you, but I think we've uh, we, we've we've tried to look for what we've lost, and we've helped this wonderful person find their child uh, that ran away. I, I think there's much more to the carnival to explore. I think we should I think we should go ahead and, and go. And he kind of grabs Kalik a little. Is Kalik <laughs> okay with me grabbing him? Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna kind of grab Kalik a little bit and be like, Let, let's go a little bit. Yeah, like you see Durla like turn and then more or less put their back to the group and is more is uh, turning their attention back to the children. And as the oh, group kind of begins to moment, step away, right? Um, I think this could be a good time for us to take a quick break. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We will be back in about five minutes. Please join us in grabbing some water, doing a little stretch, and we'll be back soon. Uh, so the group of you kind of step away from the lost property and you find that there is a whole carnival all around you, open for opportunity, many things going on. Close by you hear the sound of the carousel nearby. Behind you, you see the dragonfly rides. You can see that there are very large lily pads out in the water and on them are horse-sized dragonflies taking flight. And further past the carousel, you see what looks like a large open orchard area, perhaps for food and rest. Nope. <clears throat> I, I don't know where else uh, everyone wants to go, but uh, I can gladly uh, help guide the way. I know someone else has a, has a, has a map, but um, I sort of know myself around these parts of it. Are we all together again? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know if we had Rick had come back. Rick is yeah. a wolf. I'm a dog. <laughs> Sweet. You oh. only know it's her because of the snake and the wizards. Yep. Yep. And oh, flowers. And we have a puppy now. Yeah, they're just bouncing on their ears. As you're looking at the two wizard puppets on Ricaria oh. wolf ears, can I get Riley? Very nice guy. Thank you so much for the draw from the deck of many. And thank Verdi you nice so guy. much. Hello, Jay. Welcome. Jay. Lord Gusimba, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome on in, everybody. We are playing The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, except in Greyhawk. We are currently in the Vesvi Forest outside of Chendal. Heck yeah. And Riley's about to draw a card. Stop. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> You've drawn the explosion card. <laughs> oh no. Wow. And then Ooh. the end. Just kidding. Um, yeah, so the group of you are holding this map of the carnival. 
And you're looking around and you are on only one of two sides. There are so many options here around you. Um, Which way do you want to go? Chester? <laughs> yes? What's the mystery mine I see on the south end of the carnival? <clears throat> Chester? Oh, so uh Chester will tell you I'm sorry to just kind of speak for you. No, I was gonna I was gonna lead into asking you, so go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh Chester will tell you that the mine is a roller coaster. Yeah, so oh. if you're in, if you're into that sort of thing, it's 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 uh, it's a fun little uh get together. Um a lot of people like the roller coasters. So we can go um <clears throat> What about we... this oh. one over here? She points a feather over at a uh, snail racing. Oh, it's um uh, well it's sort of self explanatory. Uh we wa we watch snails race. I... Watch uh, snails race or ride on the snails while they race. Both. Uh, DM okay. <clears throat> <laughs> uh both. <laughs> It, it's kind of fun. They're they're pretty big, so I mean, you know, they're, they're not like the small little snails. They're pretty big snails. You get to kind of watch them race around. Fun if you like that. Chester, you would know that advertised as the best attraction in the <laughs> entire carnival would be the Pixie Kingdom, but you've never yeah. you've never been there before, no. <clears throat> so you no, don't I, know what to expect. I don't know what to expect from there. But um, when I, especially when I worked the ticket booth and different other places, uh, one thing that was always told to me was that the Pixie Kingdom was so great. And uh, I wouldn't mind exploring it. I mean, I've been told for years how great it is. And I never got to see it. But uh, that would be another option as well. Um, where, where was everyone like to go? I mean, that's. Well, should we not visit them all? Well, yes. But where do we want to go first? Pixie Kingdom seems to be the closest. I'm good with that. I've again, I've got a natural curiosity of that place. Never really been inside of it. Bark says Ricaria. Ricaria like kind of sits up <laughs> oh, on their yes. hind legs and looks at the map and like puts their little wet nose and kind of pokes at the feasting orchard and then they look over to Riley. Yeah, and, and Riley's looking at the map and, and they. They, they're kind of pointing around the big top and and you kind of notice that their finger kind of seems to drift back to the staff area every time. It's like, well, the masters are over there. I don't know. Wait, do you need... Do you need... Do, are you saying that out loud? <laughs> yes. I... The staffing area. Um, I mean... Caleb... <clears throat> go ahead. C Caleb, Caleb, go point out... Uh, if your goal is to get into the staffing area, it appears that the gondola swans go around the entire carnival, including past the staff area. It might actually be the most surreptitious entrance. Ah, that's brilliant. Esther. The valley looks over. Lavelli Are they going to get us chest. kicked? Are they going to get us kicked out? She looks at me sideways. <clears throat> I didn't um, say we should go there. I said how to get in. I mean, it would, uh, if you wanted to go in the staffing area, sending me in there would probably be the best option for everybody. But why do you want to go into the staffing area? Mm. <laughs> well, there, there, there's things that I got, I got to find out. I guess, um, but but that's okay. Not not right now. Maybe later. Not suspicious <laughs> at all. Um. Okay. Um. We'll put a pin in it for now. I guess. Um, uh, yeah. One more thing, Chester. Yes. Is there not somebody you should be telling that you're back? You know. <laughs> you know what? That might be a good excuse for me to go into the staffing area. <laughs> You know, sometimes I don't use this brain very well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leveni. If you want me to, Riley, I can 
I've got a report anyway. I was I was looking for what I lost, and it it, it wasn't found in the lost and found. So, yeah. Um. So, is there someone that, in the staffing area they pointed you to? No. Didn't didn't Derla suggest uh, the maesters of the of the carnival? Yes. Derla oh. recommended that you should not co uh, confront them. You should perhaps try to wait it out. That there are ways to beat them <laughs> without going directly ah. to the staff area. You can go to the staff area if you want, but it was suggested that's probably not the best option. These oh, are these points I, are all true. <laughs> I I I must have missed that. Kaelic was thinking about bringing up his parents. <laughs> <clears throat> you were told that um, you can expect them at the big top during the big top extravaganza, yes. which is in a few hours. Yes, we got they, a few they'll, hours they'll be there. Yes, I. Nevertheless, it is probably worth it for us to uh, notify someone that Chester's all right. Yes. Um, uh, I'm sure you could find someone at the big top. I could actually go to the big top instead of just going into the staffing area, I suppose. Um, well, if our goal is to look around a bit and possibly find whoever this troublemaker is, if we've only got a couple hours, we could always split up, see more attractions. Yes, of course. Um, I'm I'm gonna go to the big top staffing area area to just let somebody know that I'm here, and then I can always meet up with someone else unless someone wants to come with me, and then we can go exploring. It's totally up to anybody, but I have to check in. It's probably something I should do. Is is it too late? Is it known group wide that Chester has no sense of direction as well? Well, I established. <laughs> well, mentioned it. Would one way would my no sense of direction also be in the circus? I feel like I would know my way around the circus. It would just be outside of it that I wouldn't know where I'm at. It's up to you. Uh, if you want me to decide for you, I would say that yes, it absolutely also affects you in the circus. Usually have someone like with you. <laughs> I would. Oh, man. Chester's never noticed, but all the jobs he's assigned are in one place. Yeah. <laughs> Lucaria, like, looks over to you, Chester, and, like, sits down and kind of, like, wags their tail and puts a pop to volunteer. Oh. Oh. Well, I don't know how well I'll be able to... Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll go with... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I guess... I... <sighs> yeah, you know what? Chaos being what it is, I don't know jack shit about the time. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. See, you, you don't actually have it. one specific job. You're the helper of wherever you show up. You're just yep. supposed to help. Yep. I think, honestly, ah! that's that's how things have gone for you for the most part. Yep. Honestly. Don't there are any... quite a few employees here. so mm -hmm. And it's a pretty high turnover. At least... <laughs> I at least recognize where the big top is and I can go there for Kim's yeah, sake. It's, but I mean yeah. it's literally right in front of you. You are yeah. all right there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but just... okay, so Ricaria and Chester are gonna go ahead to the big top. What's everyone else gonna do? Kayla can't in good conscience let Ricaria go off <laughs> without okay. like being there. <laughs> Excellent. So you'll go with them. Riley and Lovelli. <clears throat> Lovelli glances over at Riley. Are we together? We got this. Let's go. Let's go look for this bad guy. She nods. Okay. What direction do you want to go in? <laughs> Please just pick something. Pixie Kingdom. Okay. Excellent. Oh, yeah. We get the best attraction. Fuck everyone else. How dare else. you? <laughs> How dare. Hey, All you right. wanted the feast at your church. <laughs> We're going to start off first with the big top. Okay. So. Ricaria, Kalik, and Chester, as you're making your way towards the big top, you enter in and you see that they're still setting up. You see that the area is, um, in the interior, is quite oval in shape. You see that there are a number of benches kind of lining the outer rim of this clearing. 
And in the center, you can see that they are currently setting up a ring from the ceiling and there are a number of different attractions. There's a cannon kind of being wheeled out on one end. On another end, there are a number of performers stretching. Um, as you're in there, you almost immediately uh, are become addressed by a person. You hear their thunderous steps as they come forward. As you turn around, you see this mountain of a person. You recognize this person, Chester. Mm -hmm. This is Burley. Hello, Burley. You know that Burley is a performer for some various feats of strength, and they also act as an enforcer for Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. You know that this is probably the most reliably, like, consistent person to help deal with problems. Oh. <clears throat> Hello again, Burley. Um, I was able to find, luckily find my way back to the, the carnival. I fell out of one of the caravans as we were sort of flying in the air. I want to be able to check in to let people know that I'm here. Like, I've got a my wings, a visitor sort of thing, and there was tickets left for me and a few others, strangely. Um, but I, I just want to make sure that nobody thinks I ran off and I've disappeared from the circus. See, this bugbear is wearing a jack-o'-lantern helmet, and they look down at you. Very powerful, large head craning as they loom over each one of you. They say, you know, the bosses are unavailable. You will be able to find them during the Big Top Extravaganza, but it is good to know that you are safe and you are here. I was a bit um, worried when you didn't check in. Yes, uh, I was a bit worried too. Uh, sometimes I don't know my way around things. Um, it's all right, Chester. So get, will it be okay for me to wait? Will I get in trouble if I wait until the big... The big no. adventure tonight we okay. already scheduled out everyone's duties for the day okay, okay honestly and they kind of look around we don't really need much help right now okay well as long as i don't as long as i don't get in trouble then i'm i'll i'll ask them during the during the event or after the event or whatever will be easiest <clears throat> it'll be fine i'm okay. sure that you can relax and okay. if anyone needs help i'm sure they'll find you as they always do I kind of like turn to look at Ricaria and I cant their head a little bit. Ricaria will kind of mimic it and you see like the little tail they have start to kind of wag a bit. You see Burly kind of slowly crouch down. Do you still have the books attached to you? Um I would say yeah, they're still like bind on to the back of this uh onto the back of the wolf. In a very quiet voice, you hear Burley ask, Do you write poetry? <laughs> and they take a moment and they kind of like take a few steps back and they kind of hold up a paw and they will take a moment to kind of shift back into tiefling form. It's just, <coughs> uh, Sorry, hi! Um, no, I actually, uh, I draw pictures. And they like, take out one of the books and they open it and there's like uh inside is labeled um this one in particular says large frog uh and it's details about um the frog that they had encountered the description the size and everything and there's a picture of the frog and a little tiny tiny silhouette of ricaria that's beside it and it's like i i put up uh various creatures and stuff that i meet and find uh, and I draw them in a book, and it's like a little guide, so I remember them all. You see them kind of offer their hand out to try to take it? Do you want to look at it? Please, may I? Yeah, of course. And they hand this one over. Uh, this one is M through uh, W. So they kind of like bring this closer to their 
face and you see them kind of squinting through the eye holes of this mask and he stands up he holds the book out he clears his throat <clears throat> oh fine creature green perhaps the largest to be seen never near never far somewhere in between and I close the book and then hand it back to you Rikari kind of looks up uh, and before taking it there's like a tiny little blush on their cheeks they see that was really uh, nice it was really nice thank, thank you that you see him kind of like pull on his dungarees and he's like mm, I prefer to keep the muscle of the mind sharp that's why they call him Burly. <laughs> he seemed to have a very sharp line. I like your beard as well. It's really nice. You can hear the scruffing as he like kind of rubs at his chin. He says, thank you. Well, I must attend to my work. Chester, have a good day. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Stay thank out you. of trouble. I, I will. He, he leans forward. He, he seems like he's about to leave and then he has an idea. He leans forward and he says, Keep an eye out for a troublemaker. You know, <clears throat> I we had stopped by the Lost and Found, and we had heard about a troublemaker. Yes. There's someone going around. They... Uh, they are... I believe that what what what? <laughs> They're kettle corn. Oh my god! According no, to Riley, uh, they they might possess the ability of magic. Hmm. I suspect that they might be using a disguise self spell. Oh. Oh okay. Okay. Well, I'm familiar with those. Um, okay. Do... Does anyone have, like... Wait, I, even with some disguise, there might be some distinct feature? Like, anything? Or is it just the with the disguise you just can't tell? Mm. We've been getting reports of a Kenku going around, causing trouble. Okay. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Then I'll turn to the other two and be like, <clears throat> it's a Kenku I guess we're looking for that's causing trouble. Oh. Well, do we I wouldn't. Do I wouldn't say that because they are supposedly going around in multiple forms. Okay. Well, they're, they're, they're at the moment, last they saw, they were posing as a kinky. They could change at any moment. Do they smell like anything? Hmm. Early looks thoughtful and says, "Well, I believe that." They were over by the Pixie Kingdom. <laughs> so they smell like pixies? Well. <laughs> what do pixies smell like? And they look over to Chester. Cuc oh. Cuckoo melon sandwiches. Cuckoo melon sandwiches? I have no idea what that is, but I'm excited to find out. It's a... <clears throat> it's an interesting smell. Okay. Keep your nose at the ready, Chester. We're gonna need it. Are you? They stare, like, dead into Chester's eyes when they Are say you... that very seriously. I, I, I might have missed it. Are you still in your dog form? As you oh, no, the they've shifted comment? back into oh, okay. the okay, okay. thing. Otherwise, well, you would be hearing bark, 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 bark. bark. That's what I figured, <laughs> but I thought, maybe, I thought maybe for some reason to use whatever to talk common. No. <clears throat> okay, so I'm like, oh, well, if you were in your dog form, I'd tell you the same. But yes, let's keep our, let's keep our, uh, let's keep our nose out. Okay. Can do. Burly begins to walk away. Bye-bye, Burly. While they were talking to Burly, mm -hmm. Kaelic is like a little, a few, few paces behind, because like, he can see them. They're, they're not lost. But also, he has no business with, like, 
telling that that Chester's here. Mm -hmm. He'd actually like to talk to um, Martyr and this new friend that Martyr has made that we have yet to introduce ourselves to. Yeah, okay. So the camera pans over to uh, where you're off to the side and um, the halfling knight that has uh, declared themselves faithful to you says this is Arlu Arlu and I we met at the hill of a mountain and it was there that we faced off of against perilous enemies but together in arms we were able to defeat them and keep them at bay I think that if you permit my liege Arlu would make a fine addition to our army. I mean, our entourage. I think that would be quite nice. I didn't realize you had an adventuring party already. Oh, yes. They, uh... uh, uh we might run Except into... Set up the lore to get more knights for Caelic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one was eaten. We still gotta find that frog. We are part of an adventuring guild based out of Chendal. Ah, how exciting. Um, Lavelli pointed something out earlier. Um, I, I am asking you to carry around my bag, which seems, uh, now that I, I think of it, a bit rude. I mean, you have your own pack to carry, and besides, I don't want to have to call you over every time I need something from my bag. It's Perhaps best if, if I uh, if I take it from here. Um, no disrespect, you've done a masterful job, but if you are to be a part of our party, it's uh, responsibility should be shared equally. Oh, you are too kind, my liege. Whatever and however I can be of service, please let me know. Of course. And he, like, almost, like, with great reverence, presents your pack to you. It has been an honor. Okay, I'll take it and, and swing it back onto, onto his back. If you change your mind, all you have to do is breathe a word. I shall keep that in mind. Uh, when you kind of look at Arlu, you can see that Arlu is... a. Uh, Bit of a more ragtag looking fellow, and uh, he kind of like purses his lips a bit. He says, I'm not going to carry anything. <laughs> how, are the, how are the two of them armed? Um, Great question. Uh, we'll say that Arlu has uh, two short swords, and we'll say that. Sh um, Martyr has uh, a battle axe and a shield. We'll say that the shield is bearing a symbol of Heronius, the god of chivalry. Well, um, Looks like uh, the others are concluding their business. Uh, shall we be off? Yes, my liege. And you Makes see him it so like... so hard not to take advantage of it. <laughs> take advantage. You see, advantage. Him, you see him like stomp over to the flap and like fling it open. It's already open, but he just like grabs it, just flings it more open. Oh, hey, Kalik and friends. This is uh, Arlu. Apparently, oh, uh, uh, by a, a uh, amazing coincidence, uh, it was a former adventuring companion of, of our good martyr. Oh! Oh, <clears throat> uh, wonderful. Glad that they were able to meet here. Yes, lucky to have had them re reunite. Perhaps we can uh, find more of the party going forward. Yeah! And we can reunite them and then they can go and do their own adventuring as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The screen ah. fades to black. 
and <laughs> we move over to the Pixie Kingdom. On the way there, hmm? uh, Lavelli's going to, while looking at the map, stop Riley just before they get there. There, now this might seem a stupid question, she says to Riley. But they did call him Kettle Stream, yes? They did. Interesting puzzle. She looks slightly to the side. You don't think, there's no way he would be over by the teapot, right? That's funny. <laughs> Without a chuckle. <laughs> As you look over at this enormous teapot, let me give you a description here. You see a 20 foot tall teapot resting on a wooden platform, its painted surface whirling with moving imagery of flying dragons, breathing streams of bubbles. A door at the base of the teapot allows entry into its interior. Those who emerge, enter emerge from the spout enclosed in a bubble that detaches to float off across the carnival. You see there are seven goblins sitting around the platform, sipping tea from mismatched porcelain cups. Well, I think we know where all the bubbles are coming from. This could be worth investigating. I too am curious. We could certainly get ourselves into the, the good favor of the masters if we help them with this problem. She nods uh, slowly. It might be best to start with the kingdom and then use these bubbles to look around. After you, my good madam. She uh, ruffles her feathers a little bit and <laughs> makes her way towards the kingdom. A copse of oak trees shelters what looks like a miniaturized fairground. At its heart, a hamster runs inside of a tiny ferris wheel encircled by minuscule wagons and candy stalls. You see a pixie sitting cross-legged in the hollow of a tree at the entrance to this realm. The pixie slowly begins to flit down to you as you approach. They say, My name is Jeremy Plum. Pleased to meet ya. If you'd like to enter the Pixie Kingdom, which is the finest attraction in all of the carnival, it will require one ticket punch. Indeed. Oh, this looks delightful. This is exciting. Here's my ticket. Very good. And they punch it. I would like to encourage you to adopt a Pixie name as you enter the Pixie Kingdom. Oh, um, um... Would you like to consent to this? I will pick the name for you. Yes, please. Your name, <laughs> pointing very directly at you, will be Bright Might. Nice. And you, pointing to Lavelli. She turns her head so she's looking at him from the side. Very well. And holds out her ticket. All right. Very good, Punch. Your name will be... Hmm... They look thoughtful. Jelly bean starfish. A dick still up. I didn't make that up. It is that literally is. a table right in front of me. That's the best name. Oh. It's okay. good. I like I, it. Kelly has not, a new name now. How jealous, jealous does Riley look? <laughs> Very jealous. Oh my god. <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> You see Jeremy reach into their coat and pulls out a hand and you see glitter all over and they go as they blow on it and it washes over you. It kind of gets into your eyes a little, not painful, right? But it's enough to like make you blink and cough. And all of a sudden, uh, Jeremy also pushes potions into your hands. <laughs> but all of a sudden, when you kind of- um... A smoke bomb. Wait right here. <laughs> All of a sudden, as you kind of blink into focus, you look around and Jeremy is eight feet tall. And you wheel around and you see a Ferris wheel, large and looming over you. You see 
caravans and stalls all around you about your height <clears throat> and beyond you see the largest almost the size of a tower fluffiest hug you have ever seen before hug does the pug have bones hug or pug it's a pug p-u-g okay <laughs> it has a collar that has a bone on it Oh my god. It has a bones day! Jelly Bean, um. <laughs> <laughs> you just see Lavelli like completely floof for a moment, like all feathers up for just a second. For <laughs> she slowly looks at you and says, Yes, Bright Might. What happened? I mean, it's, it's a whole nother carnival. She looks up at Jeremy. Jeremy kind of winks. seem to be tiny. And says, enjoy the pixie kingdom. If you for ever, whatever reason need to escape, all you need to do is... Yeah. Wait, yeah, and then he just like flies away. And I wish I could fly, and jump up in the air a little bit, and see if my wings will. Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> really? Uh, show it a play. Actually, it's working. You have been sprinkled with pixie dust. Uh, as an action, you sprinkle the dust on yourself or another creature. They gain a flying speed of 30 and a, the ability to hover for one minute. The creature is airborne. When this effect ends, they fall safely to the ground, taking no damage and landing on their feet. So you don't have a packet on you, but you can fly. As you kind of like say that, Riley, roll me a dexterity saving throw. Oh no. Five. Oh no. You kind yep. of like jump up and down and then you take off. Whoa! <laughs> well, he just immediately like flies up and tries to grab Riley's hand. I think because you inherently have a fly speed that you can fly just fine. Yeah. <laughs> like double the fly speed. <laughs> it doesn't double, but. Um... No, I have like, uh, cause it was a fly speed of 30 for the pixie dust, but my mm -hmm. fly speed is 60. Nice. Okay, yeah. So you easily managed to grab Riley. As you are kind of hovering over the pixie kingdom here, you see that it is a tranquil oasis compared to the rest of the bustling carnival. The air is filled with the aroma of blackberry wine and flower blossoms. There are eight brightly painted doorways nestled in the bark of the base of surrounding trees. You can see that there are a number of buildings that look quite inviting for you to enter. You can see the pug is off to one side. There are a number of other pixies walking around that are about the same size as you. Um, you see that the centerpiece is a palace made entirely of old cocoon husks that have been beautifully woven together. There are some cottages nearby. There's a wheel that is being operated and powered by a hamster. Right. Lavelli right. takes a moment. She lets go of Riley's hand and holds out her mm -hmm. hands like, just relax and think like to try to get him to hover in place before giving him a sort of like beginner lesson on flying. She said, think what? Think light. Think light. <clears throat> Okay, so when when you had grabbed Bright Might, <clears throat> when you grabbed Bright Might, they were immediately like overwhelmed. They raised their hands up and it's like uh, uh, feeling like they're uncomfortable being being held <clears throat> and and brought under control. And you say that, and then I I, I begin to calm down a little bit, and uh, and and as you say this. You hear my voice in your mind. Oh, okay. Easy, easy. My mouth doesn't move, but you hear my voice in your mind. I, 
I, I think I got this. Um, gentle. She uh, looks a little surprised for a moment before figuring out that this is coming from you and just nodding slightly and keeping a protective distance. S sorry. <clears throat> so I, I try to, if I can, try to try to fly. Yeah, um, absolutely. After the initial shock, you're able to control yourself. Just fine. So where to? Which of these places has the biggest crowd? Um, you can see that a couple of pixies are gathered together in the middle. There are some other fair goers like you also in the middle, just outside of the palace. You can see that one person exits a cottage and you could swear that you smell something sweet exit the air with them. Well, let us check out the uh, palace then. I like it. Okay. Uh, as you kind of come up towards the palace, you can see that the group is gathered around two people. Uh, two pixies. One is dressed in a very dapper outfit, wearing a smart hat and has a monocle. And they have an assistant who's dressed in a very fancy dress. Uh, you hear... The man say, my name is Honeymint, and this is your seeker, Starbug. Please join us for a game of hide and seek. And I think that's about when uh, the party will, the rest of the party will appear. So you kind of come up on this very miniature, small, tiny mm. ensemble of buildings and stuff. As you approach, a pixie begins to float down. Welcome, my name is Jeremy Plum. Pleasure to meet ya. Hi, Jeremy. Um, Hello. Have you seen a... Uh, have you seen a... A uh, Kenko? At all, recently? Hmm. He kind of looks around and he says, I don't think so. Oh. Hmm. Well, I did see an Aarakocra. Oh. Oh. Do you think they're here? And I, I think that's them. I think that would be them. No, they're very different, but... Uh, oh. Did you catch their names? <laughs> their names are Brightsmite and Jellybean Starfish. They wink Doesn't at you. Doesn't sound like them. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't their names. Wait, 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 before you go, don't you want to check out the finest and most exciting attraction in all the carnival? I mean, oh, we could take a look. I did, I did promote it a lot, so... You did. We should... I, I think I, we I, should check it out, maybe. What do you think, Gaelic? I mean, I'm happy to go if... if the two of you want to, but it's a shame to Perhaps not have the others with us. Perhaps one of your friends or the person you are seeking might be within. It would mm. require one ticket punch, please. Done! And Ricardia takes out their ticket. Okay. Holds it out. Alright, it is highly encouraged that you take a pixie yeah. name while in the pixie kingdom. I'd love to. Your name is Cotton Candy. <laughs> oh my goodness, it fits so well because I'm kind of sticky still. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? <clears throat> ah, I think maybe they've gotten pixie names there, Kalik, and then I'll uh, go ahead and give my ticket for a punch. All right. Your name will be Dimple. <laughs> and you, <laughs> winking at Kalik. Sure. All right. Uh, you also get a ticket punch. You look like a panache to me. Ooh. I'll certainly take panache. <laughs> Everyone's just out to fuel Kalex's ego. God, I can't. I'm not even. I didn't even like 
pick that, that's literally like on the table. Lavelli is so. the only check he has to keep him in control. <laughs> it's oh true. Oh god. You look like a panache. Is that uh, like a dessert? He shoves potions into your hands and then bleh, blows some um, pixie dust on you and you. Ricaria. Please oh, tell oh. me when to stop. Emma, thank oh! so much for the card. Thanks, Emma. I'll stop now. <laughs> nah, ruin. Nah, ruin. Okay. Ruin, ruin, Fantastic. ruin. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, as you kind of blink the dust away, you see that you are now in the Pixie Kingdom, and it is more appropriately sized. My goodness. And um, I think... Ricaria like wants to take off immediately but stops and just kind of waits for the others. I'll, I'll follow. <sighs> this Hi. is everything so big. I guess small, perfect. I don't know. <laughs> That's a big pug. Yeah, as you look over at the pug, it's just sort of sitting on its haunches and it's looking out into nothing, just staring straight at the sky. And its eyes are a little bug-eyed, and you see the tongue just kind of lolling out. And these, like, big drops of saliva kind of just crash onto the ground. I, um, Rikaria's gonna look up at the pug and go, Hi! Hello! Hi! This, what are you looking at? This was not what I bargained for. I... I don't know exactly what has happened, but I think we've either in a world where everything is very big or very small. I can't seem to figure out which one it is. Well, I suppose Mother did say that there's no quest too small to skyrocket your fame, but I'm not sure this is what she meant. I think as Ricaria yeah. is kind of like running towards the pug and calling out to it, uh, Lavelli and Riley... You definitely hear Ricaria and you see Ricaria like new. Ricaria, they're doing hide and seek over here. Huh? Oh god, I have to run over there. Okay, give me a moment. I'll start running over that way. You can fly. You I can fly? Wing. Okay, and they're gonna try and use their wings okay. to fly. Uh go ahead and roll me a deck save. Oh, I would love to roll a deck save with my minus two modifier. Mm, Hell yeah. A nine. That's a nine. <laughs> um, I would say you have a rough start, but you managed to correct yourself. Well, they like uh, kind of almost seem to trip in midair and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, oh. Ah, okay. Right. Like I this. Can fly. Oh, nice little okay. somersault. <laughs> okay. I can do. I'm like you, Lavelli, except not, but like kind of. I can fly. This is really exciting. Lavelli turns around and shows her, like, both sets of wings, like, <gasps> flying. Oh my gosh, you're so talented. We'll fly over. That looks fun, Chester. Would you like to try? <clears throat> I, I've done some kind of magic before with with um, flying and such. I could give it a try, I suppose. Come down. The purple dragon, certainly you're able to fly, aren't you? Well, it's... And Kayla will take off, just sort of like taunting Chester. God, with this is gonna go straight into the great. sky. Goodbye, Chester. <laughs> Chester rolls a five. Oh, you called it. Yep. Wow. Yep. I Chester, for... you see Kayla just new masterfully, and then it's not so great for you. What happens? Um, so I don't think Chester's used to doing anything with the fairies other than, you know, he learned the language and such, but he's never really experienced any of this flying. So while he's had experience with doing magic and such, he hasn't really done much flying. So as he sort of goes off, he does not know how to control himself. And you can just kind of see sort of a, um, sort of like a spiral sort of coming, going down. He's trying to like fly and it just doesn't work, and he's flying all over the place. He can't control himself. Turns into, like, a shuriken. Just to yeah. Uh, as as Chester just flies over Honeymint, Honeymint's like, well, hold on. We haven't discussed the rules yet. Come on in, everyone. All right. 
Listen here, we're gonna play a game of hide and seek. You have the star seeker, star bug here to seek you out. We will, of course, continue until there's only one contestant left. The winner will be given a prize. Um, and then uh, he says, all right, come up to me, tell me your name and we'll put you on a list. Lily's gonna go catch Chester. Okay. <laughs> Ricaria will go. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Right, Mike. Uh, I'm Cotton Candy. Uh, yes, yes. Panache. Yes. In every meaning of the word. You hear a peal of laughter all around you, and people are clapping. Love she'll uh, she'll yeah. fly Chester back down. Mm hmm. And your names? She lets you go first. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> my name is Dimple. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. And you? She just raises a hand to her forehead and like, takes a deep breath. Jellybean starfish. <laughs> another peal of laughter. <laughs> and as some of your own party members begin to laugh as well. The laughter just sort of deepens. People kind of buckle over and some of them start crying and the people are having a great time. I'll bring your attention here to the corner of the map. Mm -hmm. The mood increases by one. Oh. Oh. Oh god, there's oh. actually a mood tracker. <gasps> oh no. What does this mean? There's also a time tracker in the other corner. Uh -oh. oh, I was gonna reveal that in a little bit, but there you go. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was, it's okay. I was looking oh. over this map how, real detailed earlier. How dare you, Matthew? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. People who don't just have Stella's tiny little box to know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Your secrets are confined only to this box. Um just staring yeah. at the stream the whole time. Absolutely. Uncontrollable, hideous laughter. There's snot flying. People are just falling over and they're and Starbug kind of winks at you, Lavelli. Covers her eyes and says, 19. 18. Go, go, go! Run. <laughs> Lies off. The person who like called everyone out still here, right? Yeah. She's gonna ask real quickly. Is there a limit to where we can hide? You must stay within the Pixie Kingdom. If you want a few suggestions, we'll begin to point out quietly a few different areas of the Pixie Lavelle Kingdom. Lavelle is already gone. <laughs> he does it for someone else that's not you. Uh, he points over to Biscuit's Wheel. Shit, I didn't reveal the name. Okay. He points over to- Hamster Wheel. The, the Hamster Wheel. He points over to a flower bed nearby. And he also points over to a bird's nest. Wow, that's racist. <laughs> a heron. Uh, Lavelli's gonna go hide uh, on the pug. Okay. I think Philemist at, at worst. <laughs> Riley's going, going to hide in the tree. Is the tree within the confines? Yeah. Okay, and... I'm going to cast Minor Illusion to cover myself, to obscure my presence, to blend in with the bark of the tree. Okay. Ooh. Rikaria's going to go to the flower bed, um, okay. and they're going to kind of, like, go underneath where the flowers are, and they're going to use druid craft to, like... Your horns are just sticking take out with themselves, the like, <laughs> underneath, like, the grass and everything, like, over top of them, and it's just, like, their little eyes kind of peering out as they're waiting. Okay. That's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Chester, where do you want to hide? Um, if he can, he'd like to try and hide in in the bird's nest. Okay. Uh, he would also like to take the idea from um from Riley and use minor illusion as well to sort of blend into the into okay. the like twigs and whatever into the nest itself. Okay. Uh, so this is what happens, Ricaria. As you kind of begin to cast a spell and uh, bunker down in the flower bed. You realize the wildflowers are kind of like shimmying a little bit and a few of them turn their heads down towards you and they say, 
Oh, excuse me, I need you to settle a dispute that we have. Another one's like, yes, we need to know which one of us has the silkiest petals and the finest aroma. And they begin to bicker at each other and to you, and they won't shut the fuck up. Oh no, um... Chose a great spot. <laughs> you know, what I could do, um, is... It doesn't matter who has, like, the shiniest petals or anything. I can maybe help with both of you having the shiniest petals. So you're both the same. They ponder. And they say, Do it. Do it now. Okay. I get a Chinese druid craft to, like, help maybe grow them a little, like, bigger. Make them more dewy. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Just to make them feel better. Yeah, they're themselves. like... Oh, tell me I'm the silkiest. Tell me that I have the finest aroma. You both smell absolutely wonderful. And if I was a bee, I'd try to pollinate you, I guess. But I'm not a bee. <laughs> and they go, oh. And then they calm down and fall mm. quiet. Ricaria hides back under and like little, uh, they're very large um, kind of people that they have just expand and their entire eyes are just peeping out. All right, uh, can I get stealth checks from everybody? Uh, I didn't say where I was hiding. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Kalik. Please. Kalik just stands I, in place. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> yes. let you finish with Ricaria first. Thank you so, so much. Please go ahead. Uh, Kalik is actually gonna fly up and see if he can hide like under the collar on the giant pug. Okay. <laughs> so there's two That's people on the pug. Lavelia is already there. Oh, <laughs> damn. Oh <my. laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. That's fine. That's fine. You can have the same hiding spot. Okay. I need she stealth says, checks go, from go the other side. everyone. Uh, I'm going to say everyone does this at advantage. Because you have all done a very elaborate job here. Let me see if I have the right music. Um, Crit! I'm, gonna, I'm uh, also going to uh, use my uh, guaranteed nat 20. Oh my god. Oh. So good. We're so good. You're using uh, your nat 20? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, For the see. number, uh, as reference, my stealth is six. So it would be 26 total. By okay. one. Okay. So, uh, you all kind of hunker down and you wait. And wait and wait. And all of a sudden, Ricaria, boop, you get booped <laughs> on the nose. I found ah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And I'll crawl out from underneath. Yeah. And then she goes and tries finding somebody else. Does anybody want to? And she starts counting again. 19, 18. You get to switch around if you like. Because uh, Kalik showed up, Lavelli is currently like behind the dog tag. Do you want to move? Do you want to stay? She's staying. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I could do better. <laughs> okay, Riley? Dang. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm tempted to, but no. Okay, let me get stealth checks from everybody again. All right. At advantage. Okay. Uh -huh. Chester. Oh, no, we're right. <laughs> oh, no. Chester, you're hiding in the nest, you said, right? Mm -hmm. As you're, like, hiding in the nest... There is a bird in it. And the entire time that you've been hunkered down in it, the bird is looking up at the sky and says, You know, it's been quite a nice day, hasn't it? You know, I love to spread my wings and soak up the sun. I mean, it's, it's not sunny right now. It's the middle of the night. But the moonlight, oh, doesn't it do the exact same thing? Just washes you over in some really light. Oh, look at my feathers. And... The heron is just very, very, very noisy. Mm, uh, I guess Chester will sort of um, look over and uh, sort of, sort of yeah, it's, it's a really nice night. Um, wouldn't it be nice, though, if uh, we were to, like, just lay down, sort of enjoy it for a little bit in silence, you know, just soak in a little bit. Oh, you are so polite. Yes, let us do it precisely that. And uh, she begins to like fold her wings out and it kind of covers you. 
Thank you so much for the raid, Guild Superior. Welcome on in, everybody. Yay. Hello, hello. We are playing the wild beyond the witchlight, but in Greyhawk. We are in the Vesfi forest just outside of Chendal. Uh, uh, Stella? What? When you refer to us, I'm going to need you to use our pixie names. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, And then... uh. All of a sudden, she lifts up her her wing and she says, Oh, I didn't quite catch your name. And just as she does that, boop. Ah! I'm sorry. Starbug just kind of glitters her wings. Ah, I've been caught. Yes, you have. Don't worry. I'm a professional. She covers her eyes. 19. 18. Anybody moving? No. I'm going to move I, mm -hmm. deeper into the tree, hide again, and um, when I do, I'm going to give myself guidance to get a really good hiding spot. Okay. Everyone go ahead and... Calic, sorry. Yep, go ahead. Calic is going to use his wand of prestidigitation and light up Lavelli. <laughs> oh, oh sabotage in the room. <laughs> Wow. wow. Okay, so as you cast <laughs> Prestidigitation here, um, tell me what you want this to look like. So, Lavelli, you will roll mm -hmm. at disadvantage. No, mm -hmm. I'll say normal. Normal. You rolled mm -hmm. normal. Calic, you roll at advantage. Uh, because, uh, because we are so small, uh, Calic is going to make Lavelli's butt light up like a like a firefly. Mm. That's pretty cute. Okay. So it's pretty obvious, like, why this happened, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Lavelli's going to go over and throw Kalik out of the collar. <laughs> <laughs> Is this okay? Yes. Out of character. I, I think it's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> and frankly, Caleb has it coming. <laughs> All right. So I think what happens is as the two of you are kind of bickering, it looks like she's about to go over to where Riley is. But she <laughs> sees and hears all this and she comes over and she boops the both of you on the nose. Wow. We deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> it, we, we do deserve it. It's all right. You can help yourselves to some tarts and sandwiches in the cottage while we finish the game. It goes over to the, college, the cottage, her ass nice. glowing the whole time. <laughs> her car has just got like a sled tart shoved in her mouth. She goes, oh, 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 oh. That's so funny. Uh, she begins to count down. Just kidding. You're the last one, aren't you, Riley? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, so. <clears throat> so you hear a voice call out, Everyone, please gather. We have a winner. Right, Might, please present yourself to the crowd. Deep bow, deep bow. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure. I'm here on behalf of the uh, the Royal Commission of, of Ferndy to teach Dragon Chess to all. Anybody interested in the game? People start leaving. <laughs> uh, you see um, Honey Mint come up to you and say, here is your prize. Oh, I blush. Oh, a prize. W what is it? So you see a very large, a packet of dust drops down in front of you two leaves swirling around like propeller blades it looks like the same dust that jeremy had blown on you you have oh, wow. one picket one packet of pixie dust nice very cool uh, please help yourselves to the cottages we have cuckoo melon sandwiches and Tarts? What kind of tarts are they? They? I know this. I work here. They are. I work here. <laughs> mm. 
lemon berry tarts. They're thimble berry tarts, the very oh, best, berry. finest vintage of tarts, yes. Does so vintage like, mean they're old? Old enough. And you enter into the cottage and Ricaria's already there. Eating tarts. So inside of the cottage, um, it's actually a normal sized sandwich and a normal sized tart. There's only one of each, but that now that you're literally like two inches tall, they're huge. You can see that at some point someone had like body slammed the sandwich. So there's a soft imprint of like a person's body there, but there's also just chunks missing. I think Rukaria will look to Kalik, um and look to Chester and say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the person that body slammed the sandwich, they might be the one that we're looking for. Oh. Perhaps. Yeah, because they're going to smell like it, right? Uh, and they did say there would be mischief. Yes. And they touched it with their whole body. That's not very sanitary. I mean, <laughs> this entire thing isn't really sanitary, but that's okay. <clears throat> True, I suppose, yeah, it would not be very sanitary. Um, I would, uh, I'm sure, let's go for it. Yeah, so you're all welcome to eat. Uh, the food is delicious. You see that there are a number of other people in here as well. And uh, someone just kind of is having a conversation off to the side and says, Candlefoot the Mime and Palasha the Mermaid are in love. On top of that, Candlefoot's lost his voice. I wonder if that's a part of his act. I don't quite know. D'Angelo! Hello, thank you so much for the raid. <laughs> hello, hello, baby. D'Angelo! Hi, hi, hi. Please get comfy. Welcome in. We're playing The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, but in Greyhawk. Me. So Riley is going to very closely examine this body imprint into the giant sandwich. <laughs> Riley's going to bring out their magnifying glass and closely, closely examine both the, the bread, whatever meat is there, and the shape, the contour. Okay. Roll me investigation. Awesome. Mm. I just realized what also made Lavelli and Kaelic lose was the constant Calliope music playing from the lineup. <laughs> No. Oh yes, it's still going. I'll go ahead and do this at advantage, Riley. Oh, <laughs> that didn't help. Oh, Riley. Riley rolled a five and a there. five. There. Uh, can Lavelli also try, but more? Hmm. I was gonna see if there was a way to make it like a perception check, just like the general shape of the person. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and do that. You'll get different information. Okay. Uh, normal. You're normal. Yeah. Wow, in that 20. Oh, that feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Uh, that's normal for me. Okay, so with a nat 20 into a 23, Lavelli, you see Riley pull out a magnifying glass and is trying to like divine. Riley, so even with the five, you can clearly see that this is the, the body shape of someone who's a little more, um, a little more spelt. You can tell that they must have been wearing some kind of robe just from the shape and the size of all of it. Uh, the sandwich itself it is just a white bread and there's no meat. It is cucumber um, with cream. Cucumelon? Cucumelon, yes. With cream. Yeah. It looks and smells delicious. It doesn't seem like it's <clears throat> old or rotten or anything. Love belly. With a mm -hmm. nat 20, you find a feather. Mm. <laughs> and some reason you know this is not your feather. Well, yeah, they're my feathers. I know what my feathers are. Yeah, obviously. She keeps track of each and every feather. Yeah. You know this you know that this is not an Aarakocra feather, it's a Kenku feather. What color? What color is it? Is it black? Dark? Black? Lavelli uh, digs out the feather that was sort of a uh, sticking out from under the sandwich and pulls it out. This is a. This belongs to a Kenku. Oh, a Kenku? Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> come here. 
Lavelli stands there, looking at you, holding the feather. Can you please come here? I have a secret. But it's like she, a group secret. She taps her way over. And Ricard excitedly says, "Um, we were we were talking to Burley, uh, who was this bugbear who was in uh, the big tent, and they said that uh, the person going around doing mischief, they're like using some sort of disguise uh, spell." on themselves, but they were, like, disguised as a kenku at one point. So it was right. She, uh, she looks down at the feather and then looks back up at Rikaria. I don't think this is a little too real to be an illusion. So they're actually a kenku! Oh. I think they're maybe That would kenku. follow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone have any way to, like, track people based on, like, things? Not really in my skill set. Darn. I can punch people. Unfortunately, you can't punch them through a feather. Riley. Mm-hmm. As you were putting your magnifying glass away, you realize there's something on the floor nearby. As you oh. reach for it, you see that it's a folded fan. Pick it up. Open it up. Okay. Um, you open it up and it has a sleeping cat on it. <gasps> Interesting. Turn it over, look at the other side. On the other side, it has a very angry storm cloud. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder what this does and kind of wave it. We call it, it the Tempursta. Where, where do you wave it? I kind of wave it away from myself, kind of wave it in the air. To see okay. Kind of... Like towards the rest of the group, towards the sandwich. Uh, maybe the to tart. an open area. I don't know. Something, someplace random, maybe random. <laughs> random. All right, one sec. To be fair, storm cloud is not what? at all a clue. <laughs> okay. All of a sudden, as you wave it, towards the sandwich. Oh no. Uh, the fan just kind of gusts like and casts gust of wind. Um, a line of strong wind, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide blasts from you. Hey, but this is at pixie sizes. It's true. No, it's not. The oh, feet God. stay the same. Does he just go flying? So the sandwich just goes flying. If anyone was on the sandwich, you're like sandwiched between the wall, (laughs) the wall and the bread. So is this a tempest in a teapot? No, the the teapot was over there. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) tempest in a tent. Uh, you can add a wind fan to your inventory. You had drawn the sun card. Nice. You gained a wondrous item. Sweet. That was so nice of Birdie. Nice guy. Yeah, what a nice guy. Yeah, what a nice guy. I drew a sun card once. (laughs) (laughs) We don't have any evidence of that. (laughs) Uh, So you can't use it again until next dawn. (laughs) Uh, So I think everyone just stops and looks at the sandwich that just got thrown into the wall. Yeah. Sandwich? It looks fine. It's just kind of like... And then, uh, are are you okay over there? <laughs> it's a good thing you got out of that sandwich, Avali. Or else you'd be a sandwich. <laughs> we should probably leave <laughs> quickly. I mean, what about that? Like, what about yeah, that? Like, if... rumor that's that they were talking about this Candlefoot, the mime. And Palasha? You know, uh, rumor mongers are fantastic sources of information. Even if we're not particularly concerned about the, was it a mime and a mermaid? Yes. Uh, Even if we're not specifically concerned with that, uh, gossips do tend to know all of the local news. Perhaps they have, uh, have more information about the kind of mischief being spread if he lost his voice why does he not just go to the lost and found i was just thinking that 
I mean, we didn't find our stuff there. Well, our stuff was eight years old. True. That's true. Probably pawned it. Sad unless, life. unless there are kinku in disguise. <gasps> we can ask them. Wait, no, that's a bad idea. As you kind of like turn to address the people who were like, uh, you know, <laughs> the mill here, they have definitely fled at the flying sandwich. Oh. That sandwich could have killed them. Oh. Bludgeoning damage, no joke. Sandwich damage. <laughs> it's a giant sandwich. Sandwich damage, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'll say that uh, the group of you chow down and eventually find yourselves uh, back outside. So we will move the tracker up one as an hour has passed by. You are one hour closer to the big top extravaganza. Huzzah! Well, Lavelli glances around at the rest of the group. Riley and I had discussed using the uh, teapot over there, she points it out, to mm -hmm. get a lay of the land for the rest of the park or circus. An excellent That's idea. Yeah! It's a wonder. I like the idea. Okay. So looking at the teapot, people coming out in bubbles, are they in in singular bu singular people in bubbles or is there like multiple can you put two one at in? a time gotcha as Are you kind of yet? walk up yeah so <laughs> okay. after you exit the pixie kingdom you resumed normal size in in those bubbles do they follow the wind or they the seem to be out? drifting in random directions you see one person kind of like wobbling mm. around in it trying to gain control gotcha as you're kind of approaching the bubble pop teapot here, you go bloop. Or we just send them to the moon with this fan. You see uh, a couple of goblins are currently having tea. One towards the front is wearing bright yellow butterfly wings. And you can see there are a string of teaspoons on his belt. As you kind of approach his eyes twinkle, and he gestures very, very carefully to a sign near his table and says, the word that you intend to say, try saying it a different way. Hello, Howdy. hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Um, we were looking to, uh, possibly ride in these bubbles to get sort of a kind of look at the entire carnival. If you'd like to ride toil and trouble, you'll have to enter the Gnarly Tree Knot. And in order to enter the Gnarly Tree Knot, you must make... You must share <laughs> your brand. You must... Share what? Or what? Ramble thicket. Share a ramble thicket. That sounds personal. He's saying, punch your ticket. Oh! oh! You're so smart. Ah, um, yes. That's yeah. Whatever As it is perfect. you want to say, say it another way. Ah, yes. Uh, the goblin um, winks at you. Hands out the ticket. Uh, he looks at you and uh, as he takes your ticket and punches it, he says, I like your cat. Thank you. Um, the valley. She warily looks at you. Uh, Kayla will like, take a couple steps away from the rest of the group. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't really need one of the bubbles to to get a, an aerial view. She shakes her head. I was not going to take one. Would you mind keeping an eye on Ricaria? She gets lost, and I did promise her father that I'd keep an eye out for her on our adventures. She, uh, she crosses her arms a bit. 
I can do that, yeah. But how is she supposed to get lost in a bubble? Well, she'll land somewhere, won't she? Not necessarily with the rest of us if the bubbles go their own way. I just want to make sure that she's not alone and trying to find us. She'll, uh, she'll stare you down for a moment as if trying to uh, gauge how serious you are, but little do you know, she can only see the good in people. And so she'll nod and step back away from the teapot. Okay. You see Chester enter inside. And the goblin looks to the rest of you and gives a smile. Gently gesturing to the sign. Let us be on our hay. Offer my ticket. As you say that, you hear all of the goblins just burst into laughter. Just completely enlightened and enjoying that you're playing along with the rhyming slang. And they say, present your bramble thicket and be on your hay. And you enter inside. They look to you, Ricaria. I pike your loons. They're berry ice. Another peal of laughter punches your ticket and you enter inside. One by one, each one of you bec becomes completely enveloped in this sort of viscous bubble and you feel yourself lifting up off the ground and you begin to exit out the spout. And as you do, you are granted a wonderful aerial view of the carnival all around you. You feel that the bubble is pretty solid, like it's not gonna, it's not gonna break if you touch it. You're able to touch it and kind of wiggle around. It is moving on its own agency, unless you wanna try something. You seem to be going in random directions. Ricario's horn pokes the bubble. I mean, even if your horn they have does socks touch on it, them. <laughs> yeah, they there's tiny wizards. There's wizards. Yes. <laughs> the wizards start pushing the bubble to get it to move. <laughs> hmm. So if it, if it seems that we're drifting apart, I may try yeah. to make my bubble spin. I'll like go on all fours and, and try to make it spin in the direction of probably Ricaria. I know Roll she's going to get lost. Check. Nope. Yes. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. You, you're making the effort, but you kind of like fall on your ass and you're drifting just in a different direction. Ass well, over I elbows. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I what would like... It just floats along, Ricaria. I would like to try... Like, Ricaria will wave to Lavelli, but I would try... To, I want to try to maneuver the bubble over towards Riley. Um... <laughs> and try i want to try and connect our bubbles you know how sometimes two bubbles like when they um connect together they make one big bubble mm -hmm. so ricari is gonna try and like get at them okay uh acrobatics check <laughs> no, this is such a bad idea <laughs> uh my negative two modifier mm. oh 16. 16 very good you're able to move your bubble over and the two boom, they connect but they don't, they're still like- The membrane's there. Yeah. Separate chambers. You are separate chambers, but you are now like one big eight. Great Two job. High four. five. Thanks. Ball. Through the bubble. <laughs> you did a great job. Teamwork. Chester, you see Ricaria and Riley have connected and you're floating a different way. <laughs> um, I will also attempt to connect. Okay. Roll acrobatics. acrobatics yeah. 20, absolutely. Ooh. Ooh. So, so you see this happen, so you you can kind of guess what's going to happen next. What do you want to do? <clears throat> so uh, he will, um, he'll see that the those two connected, and right behind Ricaria, he'll, he'll sort of like connect and sort of like get between the two, almost. Like sort of have like at the at an end, so it doesn't make an eight anymore. It like makes like a bubble triangle. Something yes. Like so what happens is Chester's bubble boom, attaches on the top, right? 
<laughs> kind of floating like a literal triangle. Chester's on top, Rukari's on one bottom, and Riley's on the other. And you begin to float. So now, Lavelli's floating alongside. Kalik, you're the only one on the ground. But I had intended to get into a bubble as well. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. so uh, we'll rewind just a little bit. The yes. goblin looks to you, shiny eyes. Uh, Kalik will point up at the at the teapot. Uh, I'd like to enjoy the brew view. <laughs> just a peal of laughter and clapping. And they say, uh, God, rhyming is hard. They just say, God, rhyming is hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One I'm of them says that they just punch your ticket and then you're <laughs> ushered in. And boom, boom, boom. All right, he's new. Yeah, so, he's new. Which way are the three of them drifting? Great question. They are drifting this way. Okay. And which way is Kayla going? <laughs> you are drifting towards the Hall of Illusions. Okay. I I think Kalix, like he he's a pretty self confident guy. If that's not clear yet, um, I don't think he's worried about ending up by himself. Mm -hmm. So he, while he's drifting this way, he's gonna focus his attention on trying to like scope out this area, especially the Hall of Illus Illusions and the staff area, since that's not too far away either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Very good. So, seeing what our uh, three musketeers have done, Lavelli is going to fly up to the uh, bubble pyramid, and she's going to try to, while flying, push it towards Kalik. Okay. Uh, give me an athletics check. 19. Yeah, absolutely. So the three of you just kind of chilling in your bubbles. You see Lavelli like fly in front of you and just starts diverting course. And you guys are, are so good at this. Bong. Bong. <laughs> just imagine Riley having like rolled around. Bong. Do you think we could play a chess in this? Um, <laughs> kind of hard. Oh. <laughs> so as the group is flying over, um, you get a great view of the staff area. As oh, you look yes. over in that direction, you see a tangled wall of thorns surrounding a cluster of wagons lit by lanterns. The caravan inside is barely visible through a thicket. You can see that Burly, the bugbear that you had seen before, is patrolling around the area slowly. You don't see any specific entrance into the place. You see that there is a very elaborate wagon on the inside and posted just outside, there's someone who's dressed very colorfully. Maybe you enter enter there through that back little tent. Does it seem to be connected to the big top? Yes, there is a small tent that is connected to the back of the big top. Darn. You'd have to be a druid to get through that thicket. Ah, uh, hey! I'm a druid. I could maybe try, but I, I don't know. It seems a bit. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to like break in. That's kind of bad, isn't it's it? Kind of, kind of risky. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, I don't really think that we do. We need to. I don't know. My. What I remember of my first trip to to the big top mm -hmm. I think it was one of the one of the masters took what I lost uh, somehow somehow I think I have to talk to them hmm. maybe if they took something from you maybe they're the same people who took something from us <clears throat> they might have been um I, I certainly haven't felt the same since being here, but, you know. I'm... Yeah, I am. I think we should be careful, of course. Uh... Oh, 
Take care. Of if me. it's uh, if it's the same people that you're wanting to talk to and confront, I've had very little interaction, but they're very powerful people around here. <sighs> I've heard stories. I think this is people. about the time that your triple bubble just boom, attaches ah. to Calyx bubble. Oh, hey, hey Calyx. Calyx. And as Bye. you say that, they all pop. But ah, they begin really? to slowly fall safely towards the ground. I think for a moment, Chester has a bit of a flashback, but he's like, nope, it's fine. We're good. We're good. Everything's fine. <laughs> I think Rikari will extend uh, their hands to everybody and say, let's let's hold hands uh, while we float down. I put my gloves on and then I, ho oh. I hold your hand. <laughs> oh, fancy. I'll, I'll reach out my arm as well. I'll take Chester's arm. He will kind of like roll his eyes a little, but join in with the with the Yay! others. Mm, hey. La Valley, join in. Mine doesn't work that way. Oh. <laughs> it just flies alongside. Oh, okay. So you all gently touch down in front of the Hall of Illusions. You can see that there's a large tent here, and there is a glass cabinet near the entrance. Hmm. Look uh, at myself in the in the glass. Is it like a mirror? Or is it glass? <laughs> uh, there's something inside of it. Ooh, what's that? Okay, Ricaria. As you look inside, you see that there is a wooden mannequin of a grinning, raven-haired young woman in witch's attire. She's wearing a green flowing cape that hovers inside of the glass cabinet. At the top of the cabinet, a sign reads, "Tasha the Wizard, known for her hideous laughter." And as you make eye contact with this wizard mannequin, there is a sudden rush of feeling. Am I crushing on this mannequin? That's that's up to you. Oh fuck, I don't have the music. <laughs> Alright. Um as you're kind of honing in on this. You feel everything else just sort of melt away. You feel as if you're kind of transported in time and space into a realm where nothing else exists except this mannequin staring at you in the face and you beholding it. You have drawn the Fates card. You get to alter an event. What would you like to change? <laughs> oh, no. Wow. oh no, she says. <laughs> Hmm. Alter an event. I think I don't know how I don't want to make it like too too big, but I remember that Lavelli talked about their sibling or her sibling that was here that got lost. And I want to alter it that their sibling is no longer lost here okay okay cool so like the way that the alter event doesn't always specifically mean like you know we change something in time mm -hmm. and then it changes the timeline of everything that happened here like it can have all it's like changing meanings. a fact like what was lost once could be found now yeah exactly yeah okay cool so like as you think about lavelli in this moment you just hear <laughs> and then it sort of fades away and you shake your head and you're standing in front of a wooden mannequin and you see off to the side there's a halfling couple they're holding hands as they approach this cabinet and one of the halflings is wearing butterfly face paint he drops to one knee and he pulls a small box from his pocket his sweetheart bursts into laughter and begins rolling on the ground. The halfling in face paint begins to sob. Panicking, looks around and then darts into the nearby tent without getting his ticket punched. And that is where we're going to end the session for today. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> you don't want to do that. That is not good. Mm -mm, mm -mm. 
Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much for the raids. Thank you so much for all of the follows and all of the support. These were some really spicy cards. That was really Ooh. fun. We had some really interesting stuff happen. But uh, we're going to go around, tell you who we are, and we're going to tell you what our favorite part of the session was. And we're going to start off with V. Hi. Hello. What's up? I'm Vertigo Cross, Verdi C, Verdi Nice Guy. Uh, I'm a man of chaos who likes to play video games, either by myself or with my good friends. You can find me over on twitch.tv slash vertigocross. And for my favorite moment, hmm. What was the best part? I liked, uh, I really liked the ring toss. Mm -hmm. just uh how that all played out with all of us trying it out of Kalik trying super hard Lavelli not trying at all and then Riley coming in and getting or Chester coming in and getting cheated <laughs> excellent thank you uh next we have zombie uh hello I am Jacob I am zombie I am Z uh I am any of those things you would like to call me I am the clip master, lore keeper. Probably too many clips, but that's up to your own discretion. Um, today's favorite moment for me, without a doubt, has to be when um, Kara turned into her wolf form and she just had the two wizards on her ears. And she's just like, oh, look at the wizards in my ears and such. And I just. I just like in in that moment, all I wanted to do is just like I just wanted to cuddle that dog, pet the dog, you know, and just play with the dog, like puppy puppy. So to me, that's probably what kind of really stood out. Also, um, the fact that um, as we I guess delve further into this whole like uh, finding just discovering the circus a bit and then finding out that Chester has no idea where the hell he's going. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, and it's then, a little hard because like, yeah, yeah, you have the witch light hand background, but it's like if I give you too much, then you're not going to have fun with it. Yeah, true. And I, I, I kind of thought it'd be kind of neat, especially since, you know, well, we're in the circus, maybe I know where we are, but when we go away from the circus, maybe that's when I really start to lose where the hell we're going. But also, I do like the idea of, like, I guess their power to, like, take away my, like, sense of direction also applies in here. So, you know, they can keep a handle on me. So I'm like, you know what? I like that. Let's let's do that. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, you can find me on Twitter at ZombieFighter89. Uh, you can find me in Stella's Discord, Robo's Discord, a few others. I like to hang out and do stuff. Um, and then, for the two little less little plugs I have, that guy over there, Matthew. You can find me and him every about every single Monday at 10, 10 p.m. Eastern on <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube, and we do talk about nerdy news and stuff like that. It's really really fun. It's a really good time. Uh, YouTube.com slash nice Nirvana. And then if you're not sick of seeing my face again this week and you want to see it again next week not only will you see me on monday but next wednesday me and uh mr geek dice over there you can see us on our ghost assault marsh campaign which is really 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 fun um i played finn carson character i've been working on for at least a year a year or two or more and he's been really developing very well and i've been really having a lot of fun with it and i appreciate all the opportunities i get at this channel thank you thank you stella of course thank you so much for supporting us next we have b street homes Hi guys, uh, I'm Matthew or B Street Holmes. Uh, B Street Holmes is just how you'll find me on pretty much any of the social media stuff that I'm on. Um, as Jacob mentioned, uh, I do a Monday night uh, nerd news thing on YouTube, which is always tons of fun at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, and I think uh, I had two favorite things from, from this one, as far as like a specific event. I really liked the uh, the um, bad reaction that Dirla had to Kaelic mentioning his parents because, uh, I mean, because his parents taught him everything about being an adventurer, like, he's seen everything from their perspective, 
and getting an outside view of like they're not the greatest people in the world like that's a big thing for him um I, I there wasn't really a good like narrative place to bring it up but he's been thinking about that basically since it happened of like what does that mean maybe he's thinking of the wrong people like mm-hmm. you know that that i think was was a big moment for him uh personally um but in a like broader sense i feel like there was a lot of development in calic and lavelli's relationship in this because like Rivalry. we we had a little <laughs> like fight with each other and like i i bet Lovelli doesn't see it this way but Kaelic was just playing around with the magic and like hey what we would have won you didn't even need anyways like he sees it as very fun (laughs) don't think that's how Lovelli sees it but also like Kaelic opening up to Lovelli a little bit and being like I genuinely want to protect my friend Rikaria and I, I trust you to do that is like also a really big thing for him of like, this is something I can't control even with all my knowledge and experience, but I'm willing to to vest that that trust and faith in you. Yeah. I do like out of all the people Kaelic chose to mess with, it was the one who used to be a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> but see like, For Kaelic, he's like, we're at a carnival. We're not literally in the middle of a mission right now because we're playing hide and seek. Like, this is fun time and we can mess around and just like have a good time with it. Like, he doesn't see it as like, I'm picking a fight. He's just like, no, this is fun. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was fun. You got, your ass got lit up in a nice way. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Let's get a nice book. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Geek Dice. Yeah, tonight there was a couple of really, really good moments. I have to say, um, the character Kalik, I, I was really moved a couple times. Kalik catching up with that child and talking to the child, that that was really a strong moment. Uh, the RP is is potent with this one, so... I, hats off. That was that was great. It was really good role play today. I really appreciated that. And then I think a magic moment for me was uh, Ricaria's eyes in the flower bed. I really enjoyed that. That was that was great. <clears throat> so uh, having fun with this character, Riley. Uh, you can also find me here on Opposite Wednesdays, Ghost of Salt Marsh, where we uh, I've got the character uh, KB, a, a little fae uh, artificer wizard. In very much enjoying that game. That's an awesome game as well. And you can find me Sundays over at Greyhawk Tales, another Greyhawk game. So I am Geek Dice. I love D&D. D&D is good for you. D&D is good for me. Join us on Discord and let's play some D&D. Awesome. Thank you. And next we have Matihi. Hello, everyone. I am, of course, Matihi or Maddie, um, as many like to call me. You can find me here, of course, on Wednesdays. Not next Wednesday. Unfortunately, I don't play in that game, sad. Um, but I do watch it all the time and I'm always there. Uh, you can also find me if you like Twitter. Yeah, if you like Instagram, awesome. You can find me there at Maddie Matihi. You can also find me very rarely on Twitch at Matihi. Sometimes basically never um i'm also over on emma panada's channel running a uh, curse of strahd on tuesdays uh so if you want some good dommy mommy in your life check it out and hang out um and i'm also playing in the avatar game as condo an airbender on fridays every other friday i think this friday i have no idea i'm really bad at tracking um yeah and then my favorite moment of the night there are a lot um I'm really glad that, for one, I got to kind of pay Lavelli back in a sense. Hopefully that'll (laughs) settle out, not directly, but partially, because I want them to find, I wanted to find her her sibling. And I think the best moment was just Lavelli flying up to Kaelic and yeeting them off the pug. It was so funny. This is 10 out of 10. Absolutely great. Yeah. The horse playing was really funny. So good. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm still so Luna. Welcome. If this is your first time here, if you had a good time, if we made you laugh, if we made you roll your eyes, please consider giving us a follow. That's a free way that you can support the channel. And you'll also get notifications for when we go live. This game will be back, not next week, but the week afterwards at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Next week, we have, as mentioned, our Ghosts of Saltmarsh campaign. Both of these campaigns are Patreon campaigns. They are featuring Patreons that help support the channel. Because of them, we can do some really cool shit. If you want to see what you can get for being a Patreon, you can check out that link there in the chat. If you want more of me, I will be back on Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time running Unbound. That is my passion project where we run around and we kill gods and we smooch all of the hot NPCs. Every single NPC in that world is super hot. And that's the kind of vibe that we roll. Uh, we also have something very special this weekend at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We are going to be running Kids on Bikes. That is going to be with our dear, dear uh, Matihi. And then we're also going to run uh, Monster of the Week. Actually, did I get that backwards? Yes, on the later time slot. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was like, wait a second. I put you on the later time slot. Okay, so 5.30 p.m. is actually our Monster of the Week game that is going to be GM'd by MJ Russell. And then at 9 p.m. Eastern is Monster of the Week with Matihi. So I really Kids hope on that bikes. You... <laughs> Kids on bikes. Fuck, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Yes, basically, it starts Monsters at 5.30. Monsters on bikes. Oh, God. My brain is Actually, fried. yes. <laughs> Monsters on Actually, yes. Yes. So the game that is going to be at 9 p.m. that... Matihi is running over here is going to be a bit saucy, a bit spicy. We will and have stabby. Very stabby. So we will have content warnings for that in advance. Um I really hope that y'all can make it. Bikes of the week. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Y'all make this game super fun, super special, and uh we love you. Alright, alright, chat. It's time for bed. I'm putting you to bed. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.